Try to relax your anus. Ow! Dude, this is a horrible gaming experience. And now I'm gonna masturbate. 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 Now I'm gonna masturbate. Now I'm gonna masturbate. Sounded like Phil. Hello, everyone. Dark Side Phil here. <laughs> oh, fuck, I'm already starting off with Phil. I have the great new original idea no one's ever thought of. It's called a React Channel. Well, wow, Phil. Toy 2, you are working. I'm sorry. Now, I see a lot of people saying clickbait. I'm going to treat it like drinking, where I do it like a few times a year. It's not like I am never going to have marijuana in my system again. However, someone described it perfectly on Twitter. I quote tweeted him. Where it needs to stop being an anchor. Um, where it's something like I'm dependent on for my humor. It's something I'm dependent on for stress relief it's something i'm depending on for creativity um so i need to te treat it like i do where i have a few drinks you know like three or four times a year you know so if that makes this clickbait then fine okay um so but i'm, I'm overdoing it it's basically what i'm saying No, I wouldn't end up, dude, I could have, people have been like, yo, I'll give you 25 bucks for how many times have people said, would you do X, Y, Z for a shot? And I've always, I wouldn't even do like 
one of my medical marijuana gels for money. People are like, oh, I'll give you 25 bucks. I'm like, nah, I'm not going down that route. And I could have I could have done that countless times already. Um, so. Yeah, I could have, trust me, could have made a lot of money if I wanted to fucking. Like, that's the thing. Like, yeah, I joke around. I'll take my shirt off. And Wes, don't worry. I'm still doing the Pokemon stream. I'm still doing the fucking bear stream. I'm still doing... The Sekiro stream, I have the list. If there's something I missed, please let me know. I will make it up. Uh, calling it now part... I don't know. We'll see. That's a, There's like a 60% chance of that. Who's at my door? Come and knock at my door. Not that I would be getting swatted usually this time of day so I'm done with like the daily like there's a lot of times like oh shit I got a stream soon time to get stoned and I'm like oh no that's not how I want to be you know what I mean you know I don't want to be dependent on something to make me funny and I know I could be without it I how long was I streaming with intro guy before I got a medical marijuana card now, before anyone thinks, two things. Like I said, I'll have it a few times a year like I do drinks. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like I'm, I'm anti-weed now. Like, dude, I think I should make it legalized federally. I'll have it a few times a year. And it did a lot for me. It did. But too much now, you know? You know what I'm saying? And that's not good. And I have to be self-aware. I always talk about being self-aware, being self-aware, being self-aware. But I wasn't being self-aware, you know? Uh, so there's always that possibility. Yeah, I'm using it as a crutch, man. 100%. So I don't know if you heard that one guy, but I think I... The name of the new Quantum TV. You're not... Uh, uh, uh you're the tickled honest Christian straight man TV. <laughs> yeah. It's time and I'm like this is getting ridiculous and I'm like this got to stop, you know. If I was using it once in a while to help me relieve anxiety, but I'm using it as a as an anchor, like the guy on, on Twitter said. Uh, hit a blinker if you think you've built a tolerance. I was high last night too. You can ju you can hit your cart till the battery light comes on. It's not even that, dude. Like I just like right now I took I took some okay, and this is something I've been thinking about for a while. It's not because I took. It's only twenty milligrams that I took, so my tolerance is still sh super fucking low for a guy who uses this shit almost on it. Like I never use it when my kids are here. Okay. Um, yeah, my tolerance is really fucking low. Yeah, I'll, I'll go over to meth. Good idea. So it's not even that, like, I have, like, a Joey Diaz tolerance. It's not even that either. It's just... I'm using it as a crutch. I'm using it as a crutch for my live streams. Sometimes even in my videos. Um... Even though the videos I have done it in, which are <laughs> a lot of uh, the DKLD's videos have done surprisingly well. Um, yeah, I gotta stop, dude. Gotta stop. Gotta lose the rest of this weight. I am proud of myself that I didn't balloon back up. To, I put some back on. I'm self aware of that, too. But I know that'll help with that. It's not even that I get the munchies necessarily, but I wanna have more motivation to be more active, uh, things like that. Wes is a six. All right, Wes, because you're obviously trolling, and that's pretty funny. Six a.m. stream, well played. That's what I am doing. Tie dye. Um, that's what I am doing. Yeah, THC does stay in the fat tissue. That's a thing. Like, there's people. Like, there was that guy. He was a YouTuber. 
Um, and he was taking like fucking 300 milligrams or something ridiculous a day. And I guess he started to lose weight. And it like got all in his system and shit. Uh, this message is a PSA for Rich and Chat. Please don't hit blinkers. Y'all are damaging your pens and potentially inhaling metal into your lungs. Oh. Wow. That's something interesting to know. You're taking thousands of milligrams a day? You know what, dude? It, that's not good. That's bad. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. But it's better to take that than I guess it would be to take, I don't know, meth. You know what I mean? It's, you're, I mean, that's something, I'd rather be on that. Yeah, Jeffrey. Yeah, I, I agree. It, 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 you try, it helps you escape from things, but that's not good. Um... So, Gadadork, that's actually really important what you said. That's amazing. Who's is this my editor messaging me? Of course it is. Of course it is. Um, it's just I'm overdoing it because I'm becoming psychologically dependent on it. Uh, and that's not okay. You know, it's time to take a break. It's not that I'm going to completely give it up. Like, I'll probably do it like few times a year kind of like I do when I get when I drink but just I gotta scale back I'm overdoing it so send me nudes to keep me motivated well that's what I basically just said I'll do it a few times a year blinkers are when you have I don't inhale anything I don't like smoking anything um, I use edibles but I do know if you have a, a cartridge pen with the THC oil if you're still inhaling when it's blinking, that means that there's no more of the oil left, whatever you're using in your vape. Um, so not only are you damaging it, allegedly, I'm going by, I don't think that Ganadork would make that up. Ganadork, excuse me, they've been here for years. Uh, not only are you damaging your vape, you're probably inhaling metal. Um... So there you go. I don't know why they, like I said, Ganadark has been here for years. Uh. And again, I'm not, like, I'm not, there's a lot of people who overdo things and then they want to become, like, on a soapbox and be like, oh, it's terrible. No, it's not terrible. Like I said, a few times a year, I'm still going to do it. Um, and I still think that federally, it should be legal. On a federal level, that's the proper way to say it. It should be legal. I think it's ridiculous that it's not an alcohol, which is physically addictive and is proven to be way more deadly. And how many how many drunk driving accidents do you hear and horror stories do you hear is legal? I don't understand that for the life of me. No, see, Bach, I'll trust me. When I'm stone sober, I'll miss your super chats. Rich, you're the only streamer I follow. Thank you. Thank you very much, dude. You said Rich will be the Tom Brady retired and come back. Nah. I, like I said, though, I'm not going to completely, like, that's it. And I'm not going to go on some soapbox. I'm just giving you a real-life experience and why I'm doing it, you know? Uh, so, Dag, I missed your super chat, too. Watch the slopes. The part with the forty was so weird. It really shows Tommy's... His priorities, Tommy can't understand because he's a narcissist, and most narcissists can't understand this. Um, that you're not going to get everyone in the world to agree with you. This better about it fucking be transferring all the games. Okay, I thought I heard a noise that it, like something failed. This is I put the SSD in the computer where I have the Chinese 580. Which is an amazing fucking card. I got it for forty-seven dollars, eight gigabyte, five eighty. It's kind of in between. The Chinese one is in between a five seventy and a five eighty, but it's pretty close in performance to a five eighty. Forty-seven bucks. Thing stays ice cold, so it's like well, not ice cold, but one hundred percent usage, sixty degrees Celsius is more than acceptable. 
and everything you throw. Just transfer the fucking games, man. This is what I'm saying. Like, why do you need me to say yes? Just do it. Anyway. Uh, I smoked pot. So, happy hump day. Thank you. Very happy hump day to you as well, Scott. Oh, God. The, the little mermaid thing. And didn't Pat... Yes, they did. Like, he wants to get a lap dance from a 16-year-old girl. Like, I didn't even know how fucking old she was, dude. Shut up. Try to relax your anus. Well, that too. Like, shut the fuck up, man. Oh my god, I smoke pot really couldn't function with that, I couldn't eat or sleep in a hugely affect way. Yeah, dude. And sometimes, yeah, I noticed that someone else was talking about the nausea, yeah, I feel noticed the nausea, like, this is stupid. This gotta stop. You know, it, 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 it helped for a while, it definitely helped me. I'm happy that I'm slowly seeing it where it's probably one day gonna be legalized on a federal level, and it should be. But it like it's like mm, I got it to put on the brakes. I I'm looking great. I haven't shaved, but I look like a Neanderthal. I clean Neanderthal. I'm showered, but I got to shave. Uh, metal. I feel that you can control your life. I got in trouble at work yesterday for being high and messed up bad. They pulled me into the office and every right to fire me, but instead just talked to me. Yeah, you know, I mean. One thing I'm very lucky with, and I'm, I'm sorry, like, you're in a mental state where you got to go to work like that. Um, <clears throat> and I can't relate to that because I haven't been there. And I'm sure that's tough. But I'm also very lucky because my job gives me a lot of freedom. And that's why I think I, like, if I think if I had a normal 95, it actually would have been beneficial because I couldn't have, I probably would have barely done it if done it at all. Um... I don't think that would have been a good choice either, but, you know, it kind of let me, no, nothing was there, minus my kids, like I said, when they're here, I don't do it, um, there was nothing there, and when I drive, of course, I don't do it either, but there was nothing there to put the brakes on, you know, so, I gotta do it, um, trying to downgrade my version of San Andreas to Steam 1.0 if I had no luck. Alleviate my frustrations with a Ban Amber Heard star. Why are you trying to do that? Ban Amber Heard star, please. I will pay. Dude, you need a way more than a thousand for me. There would need to be like six figures involved for me to go nipples to nipples with that man. Yeah, like DSP reacts with the fat face. That should actually be his picture. Will I do it a few times a year? Yes, absolutely. I'm, I would be a fucking liar if I, if I said otherwise. Um, but will I be doing it every day like this? Hell no. Hell no. I need to know when to put the brakes on. Need a break. And it's not even a break. Like, I'm never going to do it on a daily basis like this again. So, will it be out of my life completely? No, that would be a lie. But am I done with this? Yes, absolutely. So I'm not. I'm not even. I'm not being clickbait. You know. I haven't smoked. I have never. I vaped like I tried the medical marijuana vape once. I didn't like it. Um, I don't really like inhaling things anyway. I'd rather do the edibles. Uh. So, I'll treat it like I treat drinking. Like I drink, like I said, two to four times, three to four times a year. You know. I like inhaling. That is the strangest thing Jeffrey Tucker ever said. I like inhaling farts during a 69 with a sex partner. Yeah. Bro, that's true too. It's an expensive hobby. Unless you want to get the dirt shit from some dealer on the street, which will probably have piss and fucking angel dust in it. Uh, imagine if DAP tries to interview Tommy. It's like an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. If DSP interviews the same way that he reacts, he's going to be a terrible interviewer. 
Maybe he'll surprise me, but he did not surprise me with his reactions. His reactions are exactly what I thought they would be. When Phil is self-aware and tries to be humorless, he folds. His humor comes from the fact he doesn't realize he's funny. It's very fascinating to watch. That is the main reason, part of the main reason why I follow him like I follow a reality show and I just can't turn away. Like, he is the funniest man on the planet and he has no idea why. You cowards don't even smoke crack, damn it. So, and it's like, just for an example, like you almost would think that he was doing it on purpose. Like, you, cause you can't, you better keep moving shit. Like, how many clips of him saying, uh, oh, React channels are no work, which, like, dude, you're playing video games and barely talking to your audience. What the fuck is the difference? But okay. Um, bottom of the barrel, he said to your audience, you're wasting your time. If you, if you like that content, you are wasting your time. I'm pretty sure I'm almost quoting him exactly. Then he goes, guys... Uh, it's been months in the making. I've been planning it. Oh, Phil, are you doing some kind of like tech reviews? Are you opening up on OnlyFans and you're actually going to just go with the jerk off meme and beat off for money? What are you doing? I'm doing a React channel. What the fuck? Didn't you just say multiple times that React channels are bottom barrel feeding content? Oh, God. The version of San Andreas that's on Steam currently can't be modded and I'm missing a lot of music and weather effects. I want to be a... I want to mod it back in. Oh, yeah. Why the fuck did they do that? And you reminded me I got to pick up Returnal so I could see if it runs on... Does Returnal... Is it Steam Deck verified? That's, I heard that's a hell of a game to run. Uh, hey, Rich, could you imagine Phil and my 90-day fiancé? Yes. Actually. Yes. I can. He wouldn't do it, but I could totally see him on there. Whoa! Just no hero in. Hello, hero. How are you? Uh, how much for you to dress up as Demolition Daddy on May 1st? How long do you want me to stream for? I'll also get Jay to do it too. Would it be okay if I did it on Twitch? Let's dress up as a banana. Let's start with the bear first, Wes. I gotta, I gotta look up the list of shit. Let's see what I'm missing, guys. Uh, DKLD's Keem video, list of donations. Okay, because they gotta get done, because I can't, I'm not just taking the money. Sekiro, new Pokemon games, 12-hour stream, that could go away. Dress up as a bear, because I did the 12-hour stream. Paint the town red, but there was something else with that. It wasn't just paint the town red. Wasn't it like horses or something? GTA stream, eat bugs, bull balls, chicken police, paint it red. Okay, I could get rid of one. So, what am I missing anything there? The balls are there. I may have to reorder the balls. It may have been six, five or six months now. Whatever. Whatever. 
I'm done with weed on a daily basis. I'll do it a few times a year. I enjoy it. I think it should be on a federal level legalized. Um, I'm using it as an anchor. Someone on Twitter, follow me on Twitter so you can see me shit post. Um, I'm very irrelevant on there, but I have a lot of fun. Um, they said you're using it as an anchor. And they're 100% correct. They're like, I smoke weed too, but I'm using, I get you because you use it as an anchor like I did or something along those lines. You can see the quote tweet because I quote tweet and I'm like, dude, I totally agree with you. All content moves successfully. Thank fucking God. <laughs> the bear costume should be Winnie the Pooh. How much to recreate the Owl's Toy Bar and commercial? Jesus Christ, man. I swear to God, I probably would have just re-downloaded the games onto the SSD. would have been quicker with my gigabit internet than moving them from that hard drive. Mechanical hard drive is so fucking slow. Even I think that's a hybrid one in there. I'm not sure. Maybe it's not. But it's so... Even if it's 7200 or even a 10,000, it can just... Mechanical hard drives are a thing of the past. How much to recreate the Godfather Part 3? <laughs> yeah, I'll call up uh, fucking Scorsese right now. Nah, man. CB96 to miss another fucking Phil's X Men power is that he has zeros. Yes. I could see Phil one day. He, knowing him, he'd probably be stupid enough to say no. Like A and E coming to him, like when he's fifty, because you know he'll still be gaming and streaming. I don't see his reaction channel laughing. He's lasting. He's not entertaining. So I could see Phil just like going back to gaming, which he'll definitely do. Um, and like A and E coming up and be like, "Yo, dude, you're a fifty-year-old gaming live streamer. Can we do a show on you?" No, that's you're gonna. You're gonna mock me. That's that, that and that's disgusting. I got a, I got a 25 year legacy that I have to maintain. <laughs> uh, Seymour, I missed your chat too. I take about 10 to 25 milligrams of Delta Eight. It's nice, even keel, chill for me anyway. I know you don't like synthetics, but still, that synthetic Delta Eight. I thought it was what I thought it was real weed, but it was like watered down or something like that. We need a YouTube channel that is like the Truman Show, but with Phil. Sometimes he is like fighting with DoorDash, <laughs> staring at walls. We got a surprise. Actually, the video that it was just released, we have surprises in. Uh. Anyway, let me see. Ah. Uh. It's always weird to drop a video. Got a DK Oldies video coming. I'm going to call them out with everything. Where instead of... They're still not addressing anything. They're such fucking snake oil salesmen. They... Like, hey, we're DK Oldies. This is our channel. We totally wouldn't curate this to make sure... And they, like, have, like, here, we're sending this product out to somebody. And they sent someone... Like an N64 version of Legend, or Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time N64. They sent them another game like, oh wow, all of this stuff looks so brand new. I can't believe the great job that DKLDs did. And he got like a black Wii. And all they're doing is just damage control. No accountability. Dude, I'm never like, dude, you're like Quantum TV to me now, DKLDs. I'm going to keep coming. Get what I mean, but um, DK signed boxes are a DK. Yeah, they're gonna sell them for three hundred dollars each. Uh, we're gonna to be touching grass. DSP tries it, dude. He should go. That, that's what he should do. He should just go back to. He still reviews the food on his live streams. Like, here's a piece of pizza. I'm gonna review it. 
And what was amazing was we saw one of his DSP tries it, and it was he showed a chicken sandwich. It was like some chicken burger combo, and it looked just as sloppy as the one that he was losing his shit over. That he actually updated people on Twitter a couple weeks later and, later and got roasted by everybody. And it, that just shows that he doesn't have any self-awareness. That's why he gets fleeced when he goes to, like, the fucking mechanic. Like, yeah, you need an oil change. That will be $600, sir. Well, all right, then. And now I'm going to masturbate. Dude, if he had an A and E show, it would be huge, especially with how ridiculous he is. And again, but the problem is, let me—is this saved? So I know what I got to do for donations. Yes, it is. Okay. We'll get that. Oh no, it wasn't saved. I thought I didn't. There's no asterisk there. Kind of surprised. Um. How much to put a plunger? on my nipples and sing what? Wrecking Ball? Oh my god. Oh wow, there's actually 500 people here at 3 in the afternoon? What the fuck? What the hell's going on? Never. That would never, they would get them all in a room? That would never happen, dude. I mean, oh, changing the scene going right now. React. Enough insanity from the Atari Age forums, all of which came within only 21 days. Really, all of those announcements in 21 days. Because for Tommy and Co, it's time to go back to E3. And over on Twitter, Tommy shows off the five colors of the Amico. Adam, the new I've official been there, logo is shown off via the official E3 Twitter page. And honestly, I actually like it. The A represents a smile, a heart can be seen in the middle of the M, the I is apparently the curve of the planets, I don't know, and the off-center O is fun. Again, jokes aside, I actually think this is quite a cool logo. And turns out, I wasn't the only person that liked it, as Tommy's old TV co-host actually played the console behind closed doors, and he too really seemed to like it. And I have checked out the Intellivision stuff. I played a bunch of games. I checked out a bunch of games that are coming. I think it's unbelievable that Tommy was just talking about doing- But why all the super top secret shit where people could just talk about it and not show themselves using it? I never understood that. Why? Why is it so fucking top secret? I just don't understand. Doing something at last year's E3, and this year there was a console, there were controllers, there was connectivity between smartphones and the Intellivision Amico. I was very impressed. And if that's not enough praise for you, YouTuber Metal Jesus Rocks got to play it too. Yes, it's real. We played several games on it, and we gave them feedback. And in an interview with the Tech It Out podcast, it was doubly confirmed that Intellivision has the following licenses. Burger time to the Missile Command and... and and uh, Moon Patrol. However, sadly, it was also Nothing. confirmed that the, as he Nothing. puts it, at least seven free pack-in games has now gone down to five. It's going to launch with 40 games, and it's going to have five games packed in. Also, it's going to launch with 40 games. It's going to, it's going to change your life. It's going to massage your feet. It's going to grow your penis. It's going to have Castlevania. It's going to have just. You say something to Tommy. It's going to the the fucking Abiko was going to have it. A D, like a Dungeons and Dragons stream with Bruno? So I'd have to hold the dog while I was playing Dungeons and Dragons? Before going ahead, let's actually jump forward and talk about Burger Time. Which, by the way, we never ever got to see any footage of ever. Because later that year, one of the Atari Age posters joked that Tommy was vegan and was releasing a Burger Time game. And because of this, it turns out that Burger Time is becoming beyond Burger Time. And finally, it wouldn't be like the Switch version, which, by the way, me and my family actually really like to play. Hold on. 
So because Tommy is vegan, they were going to call it Beyond Burger Time? No! But instead, it would be made from scratch. Over in Europe, Hans, who had now publicly been addressed as the CEO of Intellivision Europe, announced that the company will publish one of the games from the Franken Game Jam event. Although, from my research, nothing had ever come from this. Back over on the Atari Age forums, Tommy is going into meltdown mode as he replies to every single post that's come up that has even the slightest bit of criticism towards the Amico. No. It's not like he would go on a 14-year-old's, like, small YouTube channel and white knife for the console because he wants to know what it's... Oh, wait, he did. One person politely questions why teen-rated games are being removed. The fact that these words came out of your mouth goes to show you how little you know about the video game industry as a whole. Like, that's the thing. You couldn't even question him. Kind of like someone else that we know, too. Boy, oy, 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 oy. At most six months. Yeah, that's what I said too. Six months. He, yeah, and it, the thing is, he made it like it was some revolutionary new idea, which not only was it literally what 95% of live streamers do, he said it took months of planning. What took months of planning, Phil? Uh. You're going to react to shit and you're going to do interviews. Wow. Uh, the Amico actually did make my penis bigger. The radiation the console excretes from the batteries gave my penis and physical several tumors. Well, congratulations. Dude, that's the thing. He doesn't, he's another one. He doesn't even like. His lies contradict what he... How, yeah, how would you get a Castlevania? You know it's going to be at least teen. Ah, uh, but we're talking to... I know someone at Konami and we're talking to him. Shut the fuck up, dude. Shut up. No sense in trying to have an intelligent discussion with someone who is convinced and thinks they know so much, yet knows so little. Online multiplayer? That's been removed, by the way. This was brought up by another user who said that it is unacceptable in 2022 to release a console without that feature, to which Tommy responded... Sorry, guy, but the only one who is out of touch is you. There is no getting through to someone as opinionated and narrow-minded as yourself. That's the thing. He can't... Here's a guy who says he can take criticism. He follows the quarter. Oh, oh, wow, another hypocrite. Wow, he follows another hypocrite and enjoys to watch another hypocrite. Whoa! But all these guys, whether it be uh, the, the alcoholic, sensitive, bearded man, or whether it be the spray tan cosplaying CEO, or whether it be the straight Christian tickled man, they all like, oh, I'm anti cancel culture and I'm a tough guy. You can say. But as soon as you say anything that's even remote criticism, not only do they disagree with you, they attack you. It like all this tough guy shit is projection. They're not tough guys, they're scared little boys. <laughs> These are just a few of the kickoffs from Tommy when people criticize his console. And don't worry, I'm not going to be reading out every miserable. Oh, Phil, 100%. How many times did he talk down to people who did reaction content? How many? All the time, dude. Moan. On to brighter things, I say. As Intellivision opens up its Dubai office and teases a Japanese office is coming too and then confirms that a bok ball? Pretty sure that's how you say it. Yeah, a bok ball game is in development. The next day, Tommy confirms the amount of employees he has working on the system. They have an amazing team. We have over 300 people. But why do you need a team so big? Look, look I don't know anything about hardware development and I'm not going to make it like I do. I'm an armchair engineer when it comes to it. But I look at things like the Evercade. You think, like, are they opening offices in fucking Dubai and, and all over the world? You didn't even release the guy. Like, I could see if you release the thing and by some extremely off chance it was successful. All right. 
I got you. But the thing isn't even fucking out yet, dude. What's up, Buttfuck69? How are you? Again, this is for a system that is well over a year away from release. The mind boggles at the overhead of 300 paychecks per month, whilst he continues to kick off on Atari Age at the same user. Yeah, and he's sitting there. You're hiring all these people. You're flex. It was flexing with him, dude. You're hiring all these people. You're doing all this shit, and you're sitting there fighting with fucking like ten-year-olds on the internet. What are you doing? Talk about mishandling a fucking company and poor leadership. I'm not sure of the size, but at least the Ouya came out. How many were sold of the Ouya? Is that who is questioning? And renting a hundred thousand dollars worth of office furniture that looked like chairs you could get at fucking Home Depot. What are you doing? Oh, I got the money, so I might as well flex it. Like he thought he could flex his way to success. That's what really it boils down to. Yeah, he's going to open an office and they'll circle. And you know what will happen when he opens an office in Jeremy's basement? Hand jobs all around. The Amico, but this time he's getting personal. Leave my thread or I'll have you removed. Staying at this point is just an act of cyberbullying, which I'm pretty sure is against forum rules. Leave or be removed. Up to you that user would eventually be banned. But don't be all upset because on the same day he confirms that Pac-Man vs, Lock and Chase, Joust, Robotron, Defender and Gauntlet are all coming to the Amico. Now that- We're getting- Yeah, look, Tommy just says yes to everything. Hi Rich, I have COVID, I feel like a dead bird. Can I get a Mario paint and fill freestyle? Also, is DKLD's a stam? Breasts. Yes, you can. And now I'm gonna masturbate. And now I'm gonna masturbate. And now I'm gonna masturbate. Yes. 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 Oh la 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 la. Oh la 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 la. Boy oy 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 oing. Boy oy 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 oing. And now I'm gonna masturbate. And now I'm gonna masturbate. A very intelligent brain. You don't want to be butt fucked. Trust me. Oh, it hurts. Oh, it hurts. Ow! Oh la 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 la. Oh la 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 la. Oh la 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 la. Watch your balls. Cucumbers. 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 Humping Steven Crowder. You take the bubbles and shut them up your fucking ass. How about that? Ow! Uh... I'm sorry. That's. Yeah, but look though, everything. Hey, Tommy, are you? Is Elden Ring coming to uh, the Amico? Even though it's an M-rated game. Yes, I thought you said you were not going to have M-rated games. If you're going to sit here and cyber bully me, then I'm kicking you out of the fucking forum. What? But you. He's he's fucking insane. He's nuts. He's he's lo he's also lost his mind. How you please the crowd. Go get him on the list. He also confirms that four of these games are currently being worked on. Of course, we know that Tron is one of them. Who knows what the other three are? Regardless, he later confirms that Epic's games are also on the way and that a new trailer will drop on the 19th of August, which doesn't happen. And we've never seen any of these games. We've only seen those like where they got like some grant from Germany those bullshit games. All those garbage fucking games. It's all we've seen. The video is out. But whatever. 
The most important thing to come from this day is that Intellivision announced that they have just got themselves a grant for 450,000 euros. So, what's going on here then? My editor is telling me that his brain is swollen. He must have been looking for shrimp. Well, basically, the FFF Bayern is a funding partner to the film and games industry. Yeah, Final Fantasy VII, man. How many hours does it take you to be watching your stream premium? More like premium, yeah. But they opened up stores where they were just, like, selling, the, like, numbers. That is one of the best skits they've done. Street. Offering up grants, and in this case, to the tune of 450,000 euros for several games to be worked on in Germany for this system. With 10 yes, years of up. successful games promotion in Bavaria, we are setting new standards. We realized early on that games are more than just a pastime. With the support of the Digital Ministry, the FFF is now supporting 13 projects again. Approximately 880,000 euros flow into the development of high-quality and non-violent computer games from Bavaria. This is a clear commitment to the innovative games industry in the free state. Now, anyone that's actually followed any gaming news over the years will instantly tell you how important censorship and all-around non-violent video games are to the German market. And because of this, Tommy was easily able to tickle their fancy and basically... Out Australia, I don't know how they are now, but they used to be real bad. Like, with Left 4 Dead, like... When you shot zombies, they would just like blink and go away. Out of the 13 games and 880,000. Yeah, yeah, the kind of. Well, now that ships are more powerful, though, yeah, they kind of change directions, which I understand. Low spec games. Thousand euros in television got 450,000 to work on Pong, Moon Patrol, Shark Shark, and skiing, and as you will soon discover, a fair bit more too. Hate on in television and Tommy all you want, but this was such a wise sly move for the company <laughs> now in television doesn't have to pay for at least four games some of which are the packing games heck if the system never comes out well from what i've read online it doesn't matter the money still went to german developers so everyone's it's a happy win -win all for now. Around. and i'm sure this was also why tommy and hans were so willing to publish a video well giving up alcohol i mean he's in you know, it's a physical addiction. He's in rough shape. And I think, you know, unfortunately, he tied his living. That's another reason why, beyond the fact that I wouldn't get inebriated, that's another reason why, like, Rich, if you take another whatever sucker or whatever, I'll give you 20 bucks. Could I have made a killing doing that? Of course, man. 100%. But why? You know, it, it gets you down a dangerous road, and now... Not only is he physically dependent on alcohol, it's his living. You know? Game from that German game jam thing too, right? <laughs> Duh. Plus, in a post made the following year on Atari Age, it seems they still had money left over to inject into other German-based game studios for even more games. If they are German-based, then that is great! We have government funds that we could dedicate immediately. I bet you do, Tommy, old pal. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> oh, sorry, did. I bet you did. Besides all of this, it's business as usual. As we enter August, we get a couple of new employees join the company. You can never have too many of those. You have more kicking off at people that disagree over on a... Uh, where is Sam Hill as you get your info and assumptions? Nothing written... Previously suggests you wrote as fact. It's official, folks. We have another under the bridge, bridge dweller here. Four total posts. Anyone want to do an IP check? Edit. As was stated previous, isn't there a thread to debate technical? To thre thread to debate technical merits of Amigo, especially when we have zero picks of games yet, nor have we seen any hardware specs. Jesus. And here goes Tommy. Yeah, I'm guessing that's the same warrant from last non month. I think it's interesting how I said I'll check in next month. Yeah, how dare us that, that, that basement dwelling troll that comes once a month to check up on a project they may have a passing interest in. You loser. Jesus Christ. Hmm, interesting considering the other guy was there last month, whined and begged me on PM 
you tell these old PM instead of DM to please talk to the mods to let him back into this thread. But whatever the case, it's clear that his last post and round of complete bullshit and made up lies, that is amazing, coming from a guy who lied pretty much about everything, that this stylus Kramer is nothing but a negative troll. He's clearly not interested in getting information or maturely debating a different point of view. Tommy, even people who were maturely debating you, you fucking attacked him. I was willing to engage nicely, but instead he is only interested in attacking. And just for the record, one, the Amico controllers were working at E3. Don't worry. Just the entire thing, i.e. force feedback, lighting, speaker, microphone, wires, charging. Also, the phone app versions were working 100%. Two, the Amico is more powerful than any R uh, Raspberry Pi, okay, including the latest Raspberry Pi 4. I don't think that's true. That chipset's old as fuck. There's no fucking way. Raspberry Pi has four cores, and although cores aren't the end all be all for development yet, depends on the per core performance, Amico has eight cores, which means a lot for the way games are made. Yeah, but Tommy, if you're using a mobile, what is it, like a fucking MediaTek mobile chip? Four of those cores are efficiency bullshit, and the other ones are mad. <laughs> and it's an old chip. Uh, continuing, he makes fun of the controllers being able to back into the base of the machine and says, I just did it because the old one was like that. What he forgets is that it also enables us to do wireless charging. But done with that, dude. But it's always fun to see how badly the naysayers get everyone, everything so wrong and stupid to lying and to try to get people to believe their point of view. Could you imagine, like, Mark Cerny acting like this or Phil Spencer? Could you? Like, I wonder, like man, I, I wonder if this is not... If, if, if you think about what they would do. Would they do this? No. Um... I didn't know you was live. Uh, yeah, that sounds like YouTube. <laughs> Which is probably hurting the viewership of my video over there. But, it, you know, INEO Geek is kind of the INEO too, except it's a... Uh... I'm going to change the title, because this is actually true. second I'm sorry is ray tracing one or two words two words okay i did it right beautiful it's two words yeah it's 14 words it's three words uh look up god hates video games and street preacher anime okay uh it's only substance use that can make the well, ears perk up so if someone's using drugs in a game god they used to be bad though like i said with left for dead before like, it was so ridiculous. Like, there's a rating system. Let the customer choose what they want to play. But Rich, a kid may play it. So if the parents see it's M-rated and they choose to buy it for the kid, let the parent be the parent. Let them make the choice. It's not your fucking choice. Oh, I hate Big Brother government shit, man. Um, Yui Bowl did the same thing with Germany for his video game movies were when they were box office bombs. Okay. I'm not sure what that means. Jason Pulley, Mr. Super Chat. Oh, I Atari just got age. it. Tommy asks Twitter to find him a highly skilled and experienced firmware engineer and offers up a $2,500 reward to the person that finds them. That person's never found. He also confirms that the Jay-Z wow. INTV emulator will be on the Amico system too. I know it's just an emulator, but hey, we can add it to the list, right? Sure? 
Why not? <laughs> oh, and while she got the list open, it's time to add a whole lot more. Because today's the day the Amico fans get the Gamescom trailer. Yeah, this is the reason the trailer was delayed slightly. Gamescom. It's the usual spiel explaining how controls are getting confusing, people don't play in the same room as one another, blah, blah, blah. And Tommy's looking like a mafia hitman from the early 90s in that shirt. What is that shirt? Blah, blah. But most... Not... I mean, I get it, but come Importantly, on. Importantly, we do get to see the system. Yeah, with, with Phil. That's not begging, that's advertisement. Them itself. It's... You could actually get the Aya Neo Geek starting at seven ninety nine if you go in Indiegogo right now. Which that's the one I actually the eight hundred P screen is the one like I think the twelve hundred P screen is kind of a waste. Um, Real, it uh, exists here. It is, and it's coming out on 10, 10 2020. And as for the games themselves, we get lots of quick glances at Moon Patrol, Biplanes, Night Stalker, a. Night Stalker and Moon Patrol look pretty good. Running Man game, Missile Command, Asteroids. Missile Command looked like shit. This looks like shit. Side Swipers, Armor Battle. That looks fucking unbearable. I cannot believe they even dared to show that. It was running at like 20 frames per second. That looks like something, again, you would see on Newgrounds back in like 2006. I think it was Newgrounds. AKA Battle Tanks, Astro Smash, Shark Shark, Breakout, a Clown Cannon game thing. Back to... That looks terrible. Hulk, Snafu, Cats with Swords, Auto Racing, and... Cats and this, a game that would eventually be known as Dolphin Quest. A video game being worked on by the original Echo the Dolphin creator, Ed Anunziata. Ne I never understood that game and I just never had patience for it. Now, obviously, you are not going to be surprised to hear that a fair few of these games we never got to see. Uh, you need CVL, you need to watch my video yes it can it could play plenty of games at medium high settings sometimes even higher than that at 1080p and then the nice thing is if you want to dock it you could use it as a home console um you know and having the less pixels on the screen on the device means you could run the games at even higher settings because you're only running to have an 800p screen to push pixels around on so Yes, they're more powerful than the Steam Deck, yes. Again, that Running Man game thing, yep, never got to see that again. The Clown Cannon thing, never got to see that again. And just to make things easier for you, yes, I have gone forward in time here a little bit. and actually I even got ray tracing to work on it. Now, would I buy an INEO or any of the 6800U consoles for ray tracing? No, that's a novelty that with some games that have playable frame rates but still can do it she found that the names of these games and yeah we're getting them added well see this is the thing i said in the video this is where i was very critical of uh oh, i gotta send them a link to the video i was very critical of i neo it's like you gotta stop releasing 600 models it's confusing people are like which one has what specs what about the i neo air pro what about the I Neo Next 2, which is coming out. What about ray tracing on the Amico? Yeah. Well, if Tommy was here, he probably would say yes. Or what he would do is go into a spiel about how graphics aren't everything for seven hours, and I would just have to stare at the screen and listen to him and suffer. To the list. We also got confirmation that every game is running in 60 frames per second. Tommy hints at a berserk. Which bullshit. What was that tank game running at? Like 15 frames, 20 frames? A remake, a co-op Miss Pac-Man game, and finally confirms that the system... Well, okay. Well, the battery life, if you're going at 15 watts, I would say it actually the battery life, because that's the max for the Steam Deck, right? Um, is comparable, if not a little better. Um, but now, but if you, which I would do this only when you dock it. If you go up to like 30 watts or 33 watts, it maxes out at with the INEO, um, the software it comes with. Obviously, you're not going. You're going to get like an hour, hour and a half at most, because you're you have the processor running full throttle, or at least as full throttle as the INEO will let it. 
can run at 4K, however the games will not be made in 4K to save on space. Then right at the end of August, Tommy makes one of his big- Ah, look, Slopes, my friends. It's mistakes to date. Remember, Pat and Ian from the CU podcast had their concerns, but overall, they seem to still talk quite positively of both Tommy and the Amico itself. All right, let me open up Streamlabs. I always forget fucking Streamlabs. Or is Streamlabs already open? Yes, it is. Hey, Rich, DSP's React content so No shit. I'd rather watch a bowl of oatmeal congeal than watch DSP pretend to be happy, screech five times, one second delay between each press. Thank you, you beautiful bearded. Well, that's my thing, dude, is that like, whoa, which live stream am I on? Um, he's doing exactly what he said he hates and he's not even good at it. Like, he's just, like, he's sitting there watching S XQC. We may watch it again later, because I have an obsession with Phil. He's my reality TV show. Um, like, he's watching XQC cook something. Like, oh, he has hot sauce. Oh, he has jarred pasta. Like, thanks, Phil. I could see what he has. Like, and the thing is, he's not going to go over controversial stuff. Anything that may get him a copyright claim, he said he's not going near, which is 95% of what's on YouTube. Hell, even other YouTubers copyright claim me. Um, so what is he going to watch? He was already... Now, I've watched a few videos of myself and Cringe, uh, my old ones. But, like, day one, he's already just watching himself. He's reacting to himself on, like, his second day of rebranding his... What was that? The King of Hate Vlogs? Like, come on, dude. Like, you're already running out of content because you're limiting yourself so much already. Yeah, Abby, it's brutal. Abby's uncle. It's brutal. It's painful. You know, like, I, that's the thing. Like, should have Phil taken that money from uh, Keemstar and made a show? I Yeah, but the problem is, as soon as Phil tries to be funny like he's not like he's funny but he's funny because he's a dumbass as soon as he tries to be funny he sucks <laughs> rich you need to go to tlc my strange phil diction yes i am addicted to phil this is a fact that i have to kiss and get coffee um breasts
I'm not a fan of Melanie Mac. She ain't a fan of me. I get it. But stalking her. No one for their opinions or whether this psycho is hot for her or whatever. Like, I felt so bad with Sweet Anita, too. And I feel bad for her. It's, it's not okay. Whether, like, I like that. Just like Miss Chalice, too. Like, okay, like she has an OnlyFans. Um. And the, the, she posted what some dude wrote, not on her OnlyFans, it was on her YouTube, where she, like, mentions nothing about any of that shit. She just does Elden Ring and, like, Witcher 3 lore. And he said this horrible, perverted shit, dude. It's so weird. Um, oh, you're not seeing my face. Oh, yeah, you are. I'm an idiot. That stream is way behind. I am going to treat weed like I treat alcohol where I have it a few times a year. I'm not done in terms of like, but the, using it as a crutch. Um, so what am I getting here? Let me get some sushi. Where is Uber Eats? Hey Siri, open okay. Uber Eats. Uh -huh. Why did it take 30 minutes to fucking on open? It. Why are you on it? Um, Still working. Stop working. Go away. There's nothing wrong with weed at all in the slightest. I'm just overdoing it. Um, Oh, did it again. Okay. Oh. All right. Snip the sushi to check it for perfection. Give him a good 
tip too. Okay. Why did I pick sushi? Because it's uh, easy to eat on stream. Where if, if I have like some fucking... Ah, god damn it, stop pressing keys on my keyboard. On my iPad keyboard. Well, that's why I was on my phone, so I don't have to skip the goddamn stream. You, had, you actually had a Streamlabs? What is it doing? Is it checking my order for perfection? Um, well, because it's easy to eat on stream. Like, something like sloppy. Even like a salad. Um, is a pain in the ass. It gets all over. Check your ass for perfection. So, yeah, seven ninety nine. So, you gotta weigh it out, Ames. Do you want the moderate upgrade in performance, the flexibility of having Windows so you can play games like Call of Duty, which it will play Call of Duty at a lock 60 FPS, like Modern Warfare 2, the I and Neo Geek. Um, and you want to pay the premium for that. Or do you want to get a Steam Deck, which he yeah, has, less powerful, but it still holds its own, trust me. Um, and... You know, it's just... I actually think it's more ergonomic, the Steam Deck, too. I recommend barbecue. Yeah, I'll barbecue right in here. Have all the uh, carbon monoxide. What's up, Minxie, by the way? So, I would tell 90% of people to go for the Steam Deck. But if you want something that, even as a home system... Like I said, for two weeks, I, got, I first got the I and Neo Geek when I got COVID. And I just docked the motherfucker and played Elden Ring on it. 1080p, high settings. Um, I'm done with it on a daily basis, man. I'll use it a few times a week, year of the week. Deception. I don't think there's anything wrong with making a, a console that appeals to uh, family. I don't think there's anything wrong about making a console that wants to be multiplayer focused. I don't think there's anything wrong about it. Well, that's why I didn't get gas stations. It be having its exclusives or having the games cheap. Yeah, fish has to be fresh as fuck, dude, because then with, once it starts decaying, it uh, produces ammonia, and that could kill you. Or anything like that. I just don't see the market for it. I really don't want to be right on this one, but I, I have to go with my gut when it comes to this. That's the only thing. And that's, and that's yeah, as much as they're dicks... And I don't like them. I, they were very nuanced and balanced toward the, towards this. Um, yeah, and if you have sushi, uh, Minxie one, like, you could keep it for, like, a day. Like, if you don't eat it that night or whatever, you eat it the next day. You don't eat it the next day, it goes in the garbage. Uh, Rich today, I'm done with me. Rich tomorrow. Yo, my name is Thek the Cocoa, and I just bought two pounds of THC edibles, motherfucker. This womanization love touching my balls and my ass, man. No. Nah. But like I said, you know, I'm not, I'll do it like I casually, like I said, I drink alcohol a few times a year. That's what I'm going to end it at. Like I said, I wish them luck. I don't want it to fail. But if it fails, you know, there's going to be a lot of people out of money. And there's going to be a lot of people that bought this potentially that they're going to get their month or two of fun. They're going to get a handful of games that come with it. It's packed in with five games, five of these remakes. And then at that point, what do you have left? Well, well. I don't like or dislike the reverb. It's no big deal. I understand what they're saying. That's all that matters. Off the back of this, Tommy went on a rant on Atari Age, claiming that the duo were not fair due to getting specific information such as the... What the fuck is on his lips? Like, I know it's they're superimposed, but... Price wrong, and therefore they didn't know what they were talking about. They were not fair, and yes... Thank you, Brian, for literally partially paying for my food. Oh, God, I sound like Phil. But I did pay through PayPal, and I'm getting a donation through PayPal. That's all I meant. I'm not saying support my food. Um, shout outs, big fan of you of you who play a snippet of the Street Fighter remix later. Um, dude, if you go to here, I'll do one better for you. Uh, Street Fighter Vega remix. Gotta find mine. There's 8 billion of them, and a lot of them sound like porn. Not saying mine is better. Maybe you think mine is porn, too. There it is. Share. 
the link in the chat from IN should work. Now you can enjoy it anytime you like. I ain't doing a mukbang. I'll eat it while commentating. That's another thing, too. It's like a portable food. That's why I got it. They were unreasonable. Devour. Because they once again gave out wrong information about the machine. Instead, they based their opinions on assumptions. Lazy! But what really makes them unreasonable is the fact that they refuse to speak with me on or off air so I can clear up the wrong information they have been giving out. They are unwilling to find out more information from the source in order to correct... Tommy, you are not a good source. ...themselves. That is very unreasonable. Yeah, I don't smoke weed at all. It's all edibles. They are not being fair. Being fair would be letting me discuss the wrong... I, I'm going to treat weed... I know I keep repeating this, and I'm sorry for the people that have been here for like... Oh, I've only been streaming for an hour. Why do I feel like I've been streaming for like seven hours? Uh, I'm going to have it like a couple times a year, like alcohol. A few times a year. Uh, hello, Bird Father. Always happy to support your content. Thank you very much. Thank you for being a member for almost a year, man. That, that stuff really is awesome. I uh, should do another stream with Minxie, Chris, and Gara. You're all great. Absolutely. 100%. 100%. Why am I pausing only after staying that and staring at you creepily through the camera? It's strange. Calming down. Yes, a few times a year, you know, that kind of thing. Long info they are giving out to people on a- As long as I want. Maybe I'll just keep going. Maybe I'll stream again. I don't consistent know. basis. Bottom line is that deep down they are embarrassed and know I'm right. So their only defense is to tear me in the si God, he- I'd love to, man, I would pay Tommy, I'll pay you, dude. Sit down and watch this with me and explain yourself. He would never do it. Oh, I'd love it. Hey, Slopes. Yeah, I know it's late by you, dude. Yeah, I have Slopes coming on on Twitch tomorrow to talk about this. Uh, what the hell would it be called? Not biography. I can't think of the word right now because, yes, I am stoned at this moment. Um, to talk about this video and to go over the backstory of the Amico and how fucking insane it's been. Uh, also, too, so that is on Twitch. Make sure you click the link in the description. Uh, Jay and I will be there and so will Slopes. It'll be a lot of fun. Documentary. I don't know why I couldn't think of that word. That's that's another reason why I'm calming down with me. So, Link, when, when you can't think of basic words, it's time to stop. So, link to Twitch in the description, and we will have uh, Slopes on to talk about this. It's going to be insane. It's a lot to discuss. We can discuss how Tommy told me I need psychological help. The irony of that. <laughs> that was the last time Tommy DM'd me. I will bring cucumbers. Beautiful. Actually, some of my sushi is going to have cucumbers in it. It's going to be quite delicious. System down at this point. Instead of just admitting they keep making mistakes. Let's put it another way. Christ almighty, just hearing this now and knowing how it ended is incredible. Ask yourself this question. If Reggie or Bowser, new Nintendo US Prez, or Miyamoto wanted to come on their show to clear up bad info they said about a Nintendo game or device, would they have them on? That is the one valid point that he has made there. That is true. That's it. Everything else is bullshit. No, I got it from a restaurant, dude. I ain't getting no gas station sushi. I don't want to die. <laughs> of course they would. But they won't give me the same respect. Why? Because they are biased and can't grasp real retro gaming. Because it happened... No, Tommy, this is why. is because they don't want to just be yapped to death. You don't... Like I said, Slopes, I'm sure I don't know if you're still here or you left. I know, like I said, it's late by you. You've went through his countless interviews. 
you can't get a word in edgewise with Tommy. That's why they didn't want to talk to you, dude. Yeah, of course they would talk to Miyamoto. But Miyamoto probably would have... Well, first off, he, I don't even know if he really speaks proper English. Um, or if he could have a conversation in English. He would, but even if he could... <laughs> he would probably at least answer fucking questions if they had him on. As much as Nintendo would let him legally. You would just blabber... And you just, everyone just sits there like this in every, yeah, Slopes is saying it right there. It was, it's, what did he say? It's bonkers. Everyone who interviews them is like that. Everyone who interviews Tommy is like this. Or they're, if they're not like this, they're kissing his ass. I'm sure you did lose your mind. I don't know how you did. Dude, I lost my mind interviewing Tommy. The only time I had... There's two times I was genuinely entertained because I saw him break a sweat when I start, when I really started to realize how much bullshit this was. Is when he... When I had people coming on to, and they were asking him questions. Like, I think it was like Griffin Gaming that was asking him. He was... That's how why he started to snap it said the gaming races shit. But... <laughs> Because he was getting asked tough questions and he didn't know how to handle it. But an interview to Tommy is just preaching. And Slopes knows. We'll talk about it more tomorrow night. Go get some sleep. I know it's late by you. And I appreciate you coming on tomorrow. I know it's going to be late when you come on because you're in the UK. Uh, but yeah, it's insane. Before they were born. But instead of finding out more info, they just attack more. I think it's fair to say that... Oh, your stream lab shit. Richard Stream Remix goes harder than a motherfucker. I listened to it before. I need to fight people to hype me up. Well, why are you fighting people? That's not good. That's not healthy. <laughs> don't beat the shit out of anybody. I don't think Nintendo would let Miyamoto be interviewed by a random YouTube. Nintendo PR would be... Yes, that is true too. Why do you think... Yeah, they do interviews, but like you see people getting interviewed by I Justine. Why do you think they see her? I, I feel like I, I hate bringing this up because I feel like it sounds like salt. It's not salt. Because do you think I Justine is going to ask questions Scott, that's going to ruin her access and ruin her, her cash flow? Of course not. It's going to be, wow, that sounds great. Oh, I'm so excited for that. Wow, that sounds so cool. I promise I won't say anything that may actually be a tough question because you'll never come on the show again. You know, so he ain't the only one that's like this. But Tommy is too much of a narcissistic, egotistical idiot to know when to shut the fuck up. Oh, God. Tommy wants to talk to Pat and Ian. Unfortunately for him, Pat and Ian don't want to talk to him. They would rather talk about... Because as much as my interviews were garbage and I deserve all the hate I get for them, I'll be the first to admit it. Here is the thing. Pat and Ian also know how he interviews and they would have the same fucking problem. The same fucking problem that everyone else would have is that Tommy would diarrhea mouth them to death. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know what's going through their heads, and honestly, quite honestly, I don't care. But that's part. I'm. Sh I would place bets. That's part of the reason why. About the information that is publicly available, rather than use their platform as a way to promote the system. And now, after this outburst, and it's true, he played me like a fucking fool. That's the other thing too. The reason why do you think he talks to death? It's by design. And he wanted to use all these interviews as advertisements, so he shut everyone up by talking to death. So he had these free advertisements. And you know what, Tommy? Fuck you. Plus several other tweets that Tommy's made, which unfortunately I can't find because the majority of them are deleted. This was never going to happen after Pat and Ian finally retaliated. It's really weird. And it's getting harder and harder for me to be impartial now in terms of me wanting this to be a success or fail. And I hate to give them credit again. They held out longer than me. <laughs> Once Tommy started giving me flack when I realized this whole thing is bullshit, like I 
It was like, fuck you, dude. The more I get attacked by Tommy Tallarico. That's all I'm going to say. Because we had the gall. Which is weird, because Pat usually gets ass hurt really quickly. He goes from zero to bleeding ass in two seconds. To not immediately say this is going to be the best thing ever. Oh, and none of it makes sense. It's whatever narrative you want to construct about us being haters for something where, where Ian publicly said, and I said, we don't want to fail. This is why we don't think it's a good idea. This is the point. This, that is the point people are trying to make and why they are attacking Pat the Punk and the long hair. I am scaling back to like a few times a year, Game Corner. It's not clickbait the title. The daily shit is over with. Dude. My name's Ian, Tommy. It's not hard. Tommy, to Tommy, you might have met Ian, I think. Did you did you meet before? No, I don't think I met him. But still, it's not hard to find my name. But hey, I No, he's a condescending dick because he doesn't want any dissent. That's, That's how this goes. Okay, I think I think Tommy's made it personal, officially. And so it begins. The huge rift between the two parties. The sadly looking back at this timeline. Tommy really only has himself to blame. You know what I think is best? Stop doing hour, two hour, three hour long interviews with tiny channels. Stop kicking off at everyone that isn't 100% on board with your vision for this console and people that don't want to talk to you. And most of all, leave Pat and Ian alone. Just let your incredible console speak for itself when it's finally ready to be shown. But of course he didn't do that. Hey, I wanted to make a uh, quick video. 55 minute video. Quick video. 55 minute video. <laughs> uh, uh, response today. I would say we should watch this too, but I think we watched this already. I'm pretty sure we watched this already. At least part of it. To uh, Pat and Ian over at the uh, CU podcast. And I love how he tries to show how he has a working Amico behind him because it has the LED lights on. Because the LED lights, like, yeah, a computer cannot post, Tommy. And the LED lights can still be on. Like, I could still see LED lights on. Well, that's not the same computer, but you get my point. And, um, yeah, I think... I think it was, a, it was definitely, like, yeah, it was, like, 50 minutes. There's been a huge... Uh, misunderstanding. Uh, I, I listen to the way you read my Twitter. Now, Tommy, let's flip things. Yeah, I'm sure if they had a chance to get an interview with Miyamoto, they would. But would Miyamoto be reacting like this if they were critical of, like, the Switch? No. You're at, you, you continuously acted like an insecure idiot. And it's like, well, that's not how I intended it at all. By the way, I don't think you're doing this on purpose, but I think what's happened now is that you're misleading your audience by giving them information on how you feel or how you think I feel. And um, I don't know, I, I just think that's a little unfair. The way you're portraying me and portraying my feelings about all of this stuff. Why do you care so much? Why do you care? You could tell... Could you imagine working? This is what I was going to say before. Could you imagine working for Tommy? Any time you were like, dude, we should try it. Like, can we try this? And you, what are you saying? What are you saying? It's not good? No, I'm saying I'm just giving you a suggestion. Dude, you, the only way, this is why it took so long for all of this to come out in H. Bomber guy and Slopes video. Because Tommy had probably throughout his entire career because of his fragile ego, and it's the way it had to be if you wanted to work with Tommy, you had nothing but yes men around him. So no, everyone was afraid, and obviously he's proven he'll retaliate, like when Ars Technica, when they screw up and leaked all the specs publicly, or television did, and Ars Technica made an article on it, he threatened the fucking journalist, threatened to sue. If anyone still respects him in the industry now, do you don't think he's he's had kind words to say about me? Fuck him. Even if, you know, but everyone knows he's a joke now, so who cares? Is, is not right at all. And so because you guys, you know, won't talk to me, I thought I'd make this video. Yeah, he's more concerned about being right in his feelings than about the fledgling company that he purchased. 
We're look where his priorities. Um, are. and I want this to come across as uh, a f yeah, the PU podcast, like he's a fucking child. Friendly video. I'm not mad. I'm not. <laughs> not uh, I mean, I'm disappointed, but whatever. I I don't know you guys, you know. Um, and I just want to kind of go through uh, some of the things and. Yeah. So why are you so emotionally invested? All right. Someone doesn't have faith in your product. Wow. Oh no. So move the fuck on and just work on the product and prove them wrong. But you couldn't do it. So that you have a better understanding. You can hear it from me and have a better understanding of, of how I feel on this. Whole he was never funny. It was so over the top. I mean, it was, it was like of the era, like kind of like G4, the want, want jokes and all that shit. But he was never like, it was just something. It was all bygone shit. He should have just stuck to video games live, man. But he, problem was with people like him, it's never enough. Whole situation and what my issues were with some of the things you said. <sighs> Two days later, we get confirmation of a new white water game, future Irem titles too after Moon Patrol. Several members of the team can be seen on the Jay Leno show driving around in a Burger Time themed car. He confirms that his good looks have been Oh, that's something he's been doing. brought up in meetings with certain retailers helping get the console on store shelves. Okay. Tommy. You don't look the same as you did, dude, when you were, like, 25. I love how, like, he has all these pictures when he has... Where it's like, dude, it was a 20 fucking years ago. Get real. It's like me putting up a high school picture if I was, like, in Richard for Tech USA. Yeah, well, the thing was, it was, like, the good cop, bad cop thing. And Tommy was the bad cop. And he was... I remember watching a few episodes. It was, but Jade Raymond was actually on that show, the, the game developer. She was on there for a while. She was on reviews on something with Tommy. He states that his friends in Japan who helped promote the Xbox will help promote the Amico in Japan too. Um, you do realize how unpopular the Xbox is in Japan, right? And finally, Tommy claims that he has access to $110 million of credit if needed. <laughs> nice. Anyway, you remember that YouTuber, Smash JT, that was very critical of this console? Well, he's just uploaded another video, although this time he's going at it with a slightly different viewpoint. Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. I spent the better... Me and him had a fallen out for a while because he was pissed off at me for beginning to call out the Amico. Dr. Steve Brule, Brule's Rule. Dumpsters to keep your sea, your seafood fresh, you dummy, for your health. Uh, it feels a little weird in my tum tum right now. Better part of my day yesterday with Tommy Tallarico, the head. God, and he's such a fucking greaser too. To come take a ride in my Ferrari, come see my shit, come, come watch me come. in television, making the Intellivision Amico. And while I've made a couple videos in the past, especially my first one, that heavily criticized the idea of the Amico, the necessity for it in the market, after I met with Tommy and he informed me about what this thing actually presents to the end user, I guess you could say I've been converted. Yep. Tommy did it again. And over the next few days, Smash JT would release several videos showcasing Tommy's Spider-Man collection, taking a drive in his Ferrari, and finally, a look at his fairly incredible video game console collection. It's fair to say from here on out for the next couple- If he's still married, he must drive his fucking wife nuts. Uh of years, Smash JT would change from being a criticizer of the system to one of Intellivision's most hardcore followers. And speaking of getting the Amico name out there, Tommy started teasing that he would be going on the Ellen DeGeneres show. And as great as this sounds, it never happened. I wonder if he was just like in the area there and he was like, yo, can I just take a picture? 
He's literally had like Photoshop pictures of him standing next to celebrities. He stood next to a wax statue of the Dalai Lama. Go look this up in H Bomber Guy's video. I think it was the Dalai Lama. And pretended he actually met him. He lied and said he was on MTV Cribs and he was on like some watered down diet soda version from the UK. You can't make this shit up. He gave himself. He gave himself Guinness Book of World Records. Like, in another life, he was a used car salesman. He never went on the Ellen DeGeneres show, but that still didn't stop him bringing it up. But still, if if I have a oh this weirdo with the mask slot on Ellen uh, for the twelve days of Christmas, or we have a slot on Jimmy Fallon, or the how'd that work out? Or Conan on 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 a certain week. No, he wouldn't make a... He's like that dude, that weirdo, who got everything he said was a lie, and they're trying to kick him out of Congress now. He'd be like him, because he would lie about everything we get caught. Because he's... Oh, I would love to see you on Conan with Amico. Where does that... Wouldn't, wouldn't that be something? Oh, that's great, Tommy. Wouldn't I, that I, be I, something? <laughs> like, I think he's... Fo this is... A, I'm not sure of this. Like, he photoshopped celebrities wearing some of his video game live merch. It's weird. Dude, he's a weird, sad man. Yes, it would be something. But it's something you didn't do, Tommy. A couple of days later, Tommy teases a new game idea where users can create Amico games and sell them to other people in the game store and actually receive royalties, kind of like Xbox Live Indie Games. Another day, another podcast. Just... This time with the Sci-Fi 3D YouTube channel, where he doubles down on the C. Another small channel. Like this is what he focused on, dude. He focused on inflating his ego. You podcast rivalry. So the first thing I would say is, I would say, you know, here's the here's the deal. You misguided. You misled. The like he lost sleep about them at night. I guarantee you, he tossed and turned in bed. Like goddamn fat. Those all those people and kind of created a beef when there was never a beef. And hold on, you guys said I attacked you. No, I didn't. You guys said that that I that I can't take criticism about the machine. Uh, yes, I can. They don't have to have me on their show or anything like that. I, whatever. I don't. You know, I don't care. But to go out there and say that I attacked them and I and I can't take criticism and that, that's just a downright lie. They are misleading their audience and Yeah, the internet has a, just well, it's made it's made a lot of egomaniacs powerful, but it's also exposed a lot of egomaniacs cuz you 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 think he wasn't like this in the fucking 90s? Come on, dude. You don't think he was unbearable to work with behind the scenes? Come on. But no one wanted to say anything because obviously he would be vindictive. Maybe it's because they want clicks. Maybe it's because they want that controversy. But but they said, hey, the, the machine's going to be 200. And you served it up on a platter to him, Tommy. That was you. 50 to 300 dollars. Well, that was a mistake. Honest mistake. Yeah, there, there was an honest mistake. Now it was going to go when it was you were when Phil Adam was insane enough to think it was still going to be released $350 like think about that Xbox Series S or an Amico for $50 more or you could get a Switch OLED fucking guy man okay fine so I don't have the right to go on Twitter and say, hey guys, it's 300 bucks. And then, oh! No, you go on Twitter and fight is what the problem is. And I mean, you were retweeting people saying that, oh, anyone who says this about the Amico is a fucking idiot. Like, sure, you could retweet that stuff, Tommy, but it just, you as a CEO, it just makes you look like an asshole. I could I ship post because that's part of my personality. It's part of what I do on here. It's different. Like you were focusing on being a like white knighting for yourself instead of focusing on the product. Oh wow, look, the guy who's interviewing him looks bored. Are 
Are you noticing a pattern? It's a weird pattern in us, and thank you for being my primary entertainment for the past year. You're very welcome. I'm giving it up on a daily basis. I'm going to do it a few times a year like I do alcohol. I'm using it as a crutch. I realize I'm using it as a crutch, and it's time to stop doing that. You're attack you can't take criticism, you're attacking us. What are you talking about? Thank you for being a member for almost a year too. I appreciate that. Uh, I only wanted to, you know, give them more information like I'm giving you you or I only wanted to tell them more information. If they don't want that information, that's fine. That's one thing. But then to say that I that I I was attacked or So if you want I don't think my because I'm done with it. Yeah, I'm done with it, doing it on a daily basis. It's going to be something that's, you know, I just do recreationally a few times a year. Um, I personally don't think the title is clickbait. I think it's pretty accurate, but... Dude, I don't know who the MF dude looking guy is. Or, sorry, that I attacked them. It's, that's just not true. It's a, in fact, it's a, it's a downright lie. And so that's... You got to wonder. And by the way, why wouldn't you want to talk about it? Now, even at this point. What, what, what do they have to hide? And then it was time for Tommy Tallarico to reveal onto all of us the Ten Commandments of the Intellivision Amico. A set of rules that every single video game must abide to. And virtually every single one of these commandments were ridiculed. Let's make our way through them. One. Every game must be rated E or E10+. plus. We already bought up. Which you... I, I, is kind of stupid because that means that you are really limiting the base that could be for I could see like maybe stopping at teen fine have teen but you're really limiting yourself with that the family friendly stuff but having it set in quote unquote stone is quite eye opening now of course the vast majority of games people played are already in this category but forcing game devs to stay within these tight boundaries caused mm. quite a lot yeah, like even Guitar Hero gets like teen ratings. Dude, it's ridiculous. Of commotion. Two, every game must be easily playable without the need for complicated or long instructions. Again, it makes sense to a degree. However, have you ever played some of these classic Intellivision games like Microsurgeon and Utopia, among others? Games that are, according to our list, getting new versions for the Amico without instruction manuals, they are borderline unplayable. Eh, I don't want, maybe I'll do like once a month at most. I don't want to do it. Like, I, don't, I still, that's too much, man. Oh, this was how they were designed and they all. But it's a good idea. Gaffs, that's actually a good idea. Widely praised for being this way in a sea of overly simple arcade game ports. Three, every game must be balanced to allow players with different ability levels to still have fun. Hands up, who likes rubber banding? You know, how the last player in Mario Kart always gets the good items. Honestly, I like it. I have a daughter of five and giving her a helping hand means that she can join in too. I hate it. I'm not a competitive gamer. I disagree with him on that. I'm not a competitive gamer. Yeah, I think games should be accessible for everybody. But if a person has the skill level to be in first place, that shouldn't just be taken away from them to be like, oh, well, Grandma Phyllis... She needs a chance. Fuck Grandma Phyllis. That makes me stay... I, I would... I love Mario Kart. Love it. I don't play it for the rubber banding. I didn't know... I literally didn't know that terminology. That's what it's called. Until Slope's video. But I get that, and I hate it. Can't fucking stand it. The problem is, playing with three people my own age, these mechanics are not so great. Let's. Thank you. All right, so I don't agree with them anymore. Hope the Amico gives options to change up these parameters in every single game, even though they would be complicated for such a simple system. Four. Every game must rate seven out of ten or above on Intellivision's quality control scale. I mean, great, right? But who's rating? Do they send each game out to review sites, get the Metacritic average, and then only release them if they get a 7 or above? <laughs> no. They decide themselves if a game is a 7. Let's hope. Yeah, like Master Betty, what's good with you? That thing is so weird. Like, who is Metacritic? 
Like, you can't, you're rating your own games. That's fucking stupid. Oh, the Cats and Swords, is it? Yeah, like, <laughs> Cats and Swords. That's gonna be a 10 out of 10. Look at that shit. That looks like a free Android game that you would that would, you would instantly delete from your phone and probably would be like spyware. At least as good as Street Fighter Five. <laughs> five. Every game must cost. Oh, Finnegan Fox was an eleven out of ten. My jaw is hitting the ground. Okay, I'll be back in a second. My sushi is like basically here. I think. Let me check. Yep. I'll be right back. Birds. Actually, it is shrimp. sick of that song. I know people want Exposed back, but I actually like that song better than Exposed. Jesus, how'd they pack this shit? Why is it only a brown... Oh, gee, thank you for the utensils, which I don't even know how to use chopsticks because I'm a Neanderthal. Hopefully we get soup or any stupid shit. No soup, good. Give me 30 gallons of soy sauce. Beautiful. That's all I, That's all I wanted. Alright. Lovely. Isn't that grand? Let me move my cans. Except the one that has. Ah, I'll move them all the way around. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go. They really didn't give me a fucking fork. Where is... Ah, there it is. It's all the same thing. You're not stream... Nah, dude, I'm not guzzling this shit down. This ain't no mukbang. I gotta go get a fork, though. Fucking hell. I asked for utensils, too, and you get... I don't even know how to use these fucking things. This is what they give me. Motherfucker! I'll be back in a second. I'll give you birds. Beautiful birds.
Guy coming here for. Okay. Jesus Christ. Hi, you want free window estimates? Yeah, estimate my ass. Please. Estimate it. Oh, you heard the. Ha! <laughs> That's all. At least you know I was late for a reason. Oh, man. Less than $10. Of course, this is a good thing again, as the vast majority of the games I play, indie games, are within this price bracket. But still, outside of replayable arcade titles, it will surely decrease the amount of time being given to story-driven games. Six. Every game must support the official and television the controllers. Is, well, who's gonna want to play the games for more than like ten fucking minutes, dude? Doorbell news? What's doorbell news, man? I don't even know what that is. Duh. Seven. Every game must be 2D or 2.5D. Obby's uncle is still here. Okay, but no free roaming 3D worlds. And again, again, I see what I they are understand. trying to do here, but it's still limiting the developers that might come up with unique ways to make games on the Amico. Every game must be an Intellivision exclusive. Even ports must be unique in some way. How deep does this go? Who knows? And who's going to do that for a console with, if wishful thinking, sold 100,000 units? Think about that. Those at this point. We eventually find out that it means nothing more than adding a multiplayer mode, but at the same time, certain games which we will cover never look any different than their web browser or mobile phone. Oh, Phil, I got your shrimp. Ring cam news actually sounds like a good idea. Who recommended that? Doorbell news. Yes. Counterparts. Nine. No in-game purchasing or DLC. At first, I was anti this idea. I personally don't mind paying a few bob to an indie game studio for a few extra levels in a game I've already pumped a serious amount of time into. But, again... I need something to drink. What developer is going to limit themselves to a niche console, which they can't get a revenue stream. Hey, come on, dude. But here, it's fine. The games are essentially DLC price from the get-go anyway, so I'm happy to just buy a <coughs> sequel, as it's essentially going to be the same thing anyway. And finally, 10. Every game must incorporate local multiplayer, couch co-op, or... Tommy also said it's in this video that every game is going to be at the level of quality of Cuphead. Go watch Finnegan Fox footage and tell me if that's versus true. Versus mode. Yeah, this one I'm not fond of. Look, multiplayer is great, but shoehorning multiplayer into single-player driven and story driven games is absolutely pointless. It sometimes works, but more often than not, that's nah, actually good. That's not for one. me. What do you guys think? Out of these Ten Commandments, what are the best and the worst? They're all fucking terrible, they're stupid. I invested a hundred bucks. <laughs> also gonna get a DSP and Tommy dueling farts. Sushi's pretty good, yeah. I would never get the gas station sit. So uh dueling farts with uh Cucumbers, 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 cucumbers. Hand jobs all around. I don't. I gotta see this why. That's actually what I'm gonna do after I stream. I'm gonna put the third board up here and get the prank calls going. Internet became a what? I know I've been talking about them for like seven years, so I might as well do it. videos and articles trying to decipher the confusing commandments, Tommy started jumping on more and more podcasts and YouTube channels. He confirmed a few new games on the Level 857 podcast. Like, uh, like Bump and Jump, Burger Time, Lock and Chase. All these fucking games, where are they coming from? And they're, and they're being worked on now. So uh, I, I, I can tell you that we're talking to Sega. He confirmed that the company will be going into manufacturing in only five months. We go into manufacturing in March. Okay. So by June of... Could you imagine gas station puffer fish? Of next year, E3 of next year, we'll be 
doing a, a big press conference at E3 and unveiling every secret and everything and all some of the stuff I've told you, some of the stuff I haven't told right. you. Um, that'll all be revealed next June. Okay. But we, just, just so you know, though, we too. go into manufacturing in March. Awesome. Yeah. We can also add Boulder Dash to the list to celebrate the. There's always, I have a secret that I can't tell you. Then he ends up telling everything anyway, and it ends up being lies. Exactly one year until launch day, the company uploads a video showing off the accuracy of the Amico controller disc and a brand new website where you can buy augmented reality and RFID shirts. According to Tommy himself, they end up selling over 500 of these bad boys within only a few days. He can. Yeah, all 500 coldless members. Firms that he is talking to Konami to get Tutankham reimagined for the. I am done with it on a daily basis. I'm going to do it a few times a year. Marijuana, that is. I'm probably going to put this other sushi away because I'm full. Amico, he gets stopped as he boards a flight and it's revealed he has the Amico test you. Which means, let's just keep it real, my brother's going to come home and inhale it. <laughs> Yo. The cops will come here with a burrito for him. Units in his no hand luggage. Real. And then it's my understanding that on the 16th of October, 2019, on the awesome Retro Asylum podcast, Tommy says for the first time. DBZ, I'm sorry. I would say Jeremy and uh, I don't know, man. Quantum Jeremy. Now, look, Quantum's the worst. We know the horrible shit he said. But all, like, Tommy, Jeremy, and Quantum have big fucking egos, dude. I don't even know where to begin with that one. Time. Like, like a lot of hardcore gamers hate mobile games. I hate mobile games. Ah, blah, 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 blah. What, what, why do you feel? Because they're microtransactions, uh, Tommy. Threatened that other people are getting enjoyment who aren't like you? Thank you, Isn't that gaming. being, in a way, Racist? Are you a gaming racist? I forgot that he said it in multiple places. Like, he thought this was a smart thing to say. Imagine saying something really stupid and thinking you're Jim, you're brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> we, we could go a long way with this. Right? Yeah. Gaming racist. Mm -hmm. A description for someone out there that doesn't see the positive in what others enjoy and then go out of their way to stop other people enjoying it. So, for instance, if I said I didn't like high heat baseball 2003 and then I went out of my way to stop other people enjoying it, according to Tommy, I would be a gaming racist. No, that would just be a douche. Um, sushi. I'm gonna put this away. So... Even if I want to have it later, it'll be gone. My brother will. He will put it in his burrito and have a burrito and sushi burrito. Here's a clip of Tommy doing that exact thing. What's the deal with High Heat Baseball 2003? High Heat. If you defend this, I'm going to keep no, no, it right listen, in the ding I want to tell you, I want to explain this, this, the situation here. High Heat Baseball has always been the statisticians Devour. baseball game. I disagree. This combines that with also a graphical playable rendition of the sport. Playable? This game has always held that sort of distinction no, uh, separate from that, like mind. the All-Star yeah, Baseball, the World Series, and the triple plays out there. It has some nice features in there that baseball fans are going to love, but really when you get into the game it's just not a good playing baseball game stunning graphics absorb you in the mlb experience lie <laughs> this game is ridiculous avoid at all costs i like trip hawkins i like 3do i hope they can do a better oh, wait, job wait. they obviously can't do a worse one this game gets a zero i'm gonna give it a four out of ten way too high on the positive side we like the fact no, no, that they're hold on hold on stop right this there. was his shit like he was the bad cop with this it was all yeah. no positive. So what, there's no what that they have I, stats. I'm gonna say that's not a positive. I'm gonna say that the stats are the most detailed you're gonna find in an arcade baseball a, a game. You can play this game online, even though it doesn't work. Well, how can you say you can play it online, dude? This thing doesn't work. It does work. You can get on GameSpy Arcade and it's play on the. Ah, when they had the G4 TV merging logo, then they just dissolved. Uh. <laughs> 
Tommy does not like people like this. And if anyone goes out of their way to hate on the Amico in an attempt to make it fail, then they are in his eyes a gaming racist. You can also get religious racist, political racist, and music racist, according to Tommy, on that same podcast too. Uh, it, it's the same people like, you know, I hate this religion or I hate that religion. Only my religion so is the stupid. best religion. Well, then you're a racist to religion, aren't you? I mean, and, and of course, the biggest one being no. politics, you know, and, and, and everybody's dividing themselves in politics and religion and, and all that, even music. Anyway, let's move on through October after in television celebrated. Not racism, Tommy. All right. Yeah, that's racist. This is fish. Let me put it away real quick. Keeping fish out is a bad idea. And I swear, I'll, unless I have to piss, I won't leave again. Yeah, he's he's totally misconstruing religion or racism. It's kind of sad. He's looking for bias. That's the word. I just want to get the fish in the fridge. Because fish in a lukewarm room ages better than milk in a hot sun. So I was like, yeah, I'm not finished. So my brother is going to get a burrito later. Uh, the SWAT team is going to show up with the burrito. They're going to hand it to him, and he's going to put the uh, sushi in the burrito. And then he's going to do an ASMR live stream, Muck the Bang, coming soon. Yeah, the frame rate's all over the place, but like 69. Um, dude, I haven't really touched my Switch. It's funny, I bought Bayonetta day one. Ask me how much I played it. I just been playing the Steam Deck. I've been playing the I and Neo. I've been, I have an RTX 4090 playing. I play PS5, I play Series X. 
I just... It's time for a new Switch, Nintendo. And not for just third-party games. I want... Good for, I want an F-Zero. Imagine how badass an F-Zero would be on a next-gen Switch. Diwali and Halloween as we move into November. The company was a sponsor of a German developer award show and they also confirmed that Warlords will eventually come to the system too. Yo, I had Warlords for... Uh... 2600 and new t-shirts go on sale we get to see a fantastic never before seen promo for the original system we get confirmation that jalico reimagined games will be coming to the system hallelujah amico pillows and beanbag chairs will be coming soon too spoiler Yay. alert that never happens but most importantly on the 6th of december in television officially released the amico app an app to download that is used not only to promote the system and specifically the upcoming game Moon Patrol, but for anybody out there that purchased the t I actually would like to play it, looks pretty good, but you can play it on your phone. T shirt, you can now use the augmented reality portion of the app to make it do a little jingle whenever you point it at said logo. Now it's my that would be interesting my understanding and i didn't download this when it first came out but you couldn't actually get to the game moon patrol until you got past this augmented reality stuff which if true is a stupid idea Horrible as idea. one you don't need a t-shirt to do this any picture of the logo would do and two, not everyone knew that this was what you needed to do to get to the game. Thankfully, this startup thing was removed and people could just go ahead and play the Moon Patrol game straight. Proving that you don't need an Amico. With that, their, their own app proved that you do not need their product. You can't make this shit up. Yeah, that was like the perfect amount. Like if I had that other thing of sushi that would have been too much, I was like, I tried two pieces of the other sushi and I'm... It actually was really, actually, it was actually better than the one I ate, so I probably should have switched them. But don't worry. My brother will, I don't know where the hell he's at. I, mean, I think he's maybe at the gym. He'll get back and that'll be gone in three tenths of a second. It's up. The game itself was pretty good, in all fairness. It was very much a give it 10 minutes and you can see everything it has. I agree, Isaiah. To offer 100% sort of deal, but still, it was just a demo. A demo that didn't need an Amico controller to work, I might add. Regardless, it was fine. A good first step, if you ask me. Let's just the hope that the final the game store. has more to offer. And you know what? The same can be said for the next game they showed off, too. The 9th of December brings with it a. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to. I'm probably going to buy it, uh, Metroid. I also want to buy Returnal just to see if it runs on this. Is the Returnal Steam Deck verified? I'd be shocked if it is. It's not that it's like the best looking game, but it is demanding. Deeper look into the world of... Hide the sushi from Dreamcast, guys. Prime doesn't hold up. Wow, talk about two totally differing opinions. Well, I'll have to buy it and find it out. I, I'm meh on Returnal, but I'm going to buy it because I want to see the performance. Let's actually look it up. Does Returnal run on Steam Deck? I'm sure someone has already tried it. I'm sure 60 does. Returnal run. The <laughs> first thing that pops up, will Returnal run on Steam Deck? Ugh. Uh, uh. Let me, of course it goes to Google or Yahoo. I don't know. I, and I've switched it back to, I want my search engine to be Google. So there's probably some kind of fucking spyware on my computer. In its current state, Returnal perfectly suits and it runs quite well given the hardware with visual cutbacks while it is as nice as playing on the PS5. Well, no shit. I find myself enjoying Returnal on the go quite a bit thanks to the suspend feature and sublime core gameplay. So that means that the I and will run that thing beautifully. I'll have to try it on both. Okay. 
Breakout, easily one of my most anticipated games for the system. Being that I am a retro whore and that this game was made by the guy from Choice Provisions, who are well known for the Bit Trip series. This game, thankfully, would eventually make its way onto PC in the form of a demo. Again, like the game before it, it's really not that bad at all. The problem is. You don't need an Amico. Is again. Oh, God. Yeah, it's gonna. The spyware is gonna put ass Jeeves on there. It's done and dusted in 10 minutes. Still a nice look. In like, who goes to Yahoo to search for shit anymore? It's not good. That's the problem. Like, you go to search for something on Yahoo, and it's like a fucking joke. ...into what the future could have been, and was confirmed to be a launch title. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Seriously, this video is making me so, so sad. Anyway, 10 months before release, and in television publicly started looking for a new product manager. And, you guessed it, we get more game confirmations. This time, of the horseshoe variety. Yes, horseshoe. To be fair, I would actually love to own this one for the sheer obscurity of it. This is something he teased again in July of 2020. Can't forget Cornhole. He really wanted a horseshoe game. I think Bing is still around. Game on the Amico. The 23rd roll. Rope Tetris, I call it. around and it's Christmas party time for Intellivision and John Alvarado has only just gone and got himself Employee of the Year. Sir, I think Intellivision Amico is going to shock people. I mean, I mean it sincerely. I know Tommy's here. It, if you haven't played it yet, if you have it here, it's... Oh, Michael Pachter. It's going to sell a million units, he said. Is anyone holding him accountable for that? Wasn't that long ago, too. He said it's going to sell a million units. Let's ask Mike about that now. I wonder what he thinks now. It's really fun. I mean, I got a private thing. It's really fun. I think people are way underestimating Tommy, and I, I, I think that is going to shock people. How good it is. Things really are going great for the company. I'm Tommy still... confirms that Nintendo are watching what they are doing and news has hit Japan. We get to see the excellent redesign of the Intellivision skiing logo. Tommy confirms that he is in talks with Capcom for future Amico exclusive games. Oh, Rich from Review Tech USA is seen wearing only the finest of Amico swag. Oh, and this God, brings us me. to the end of 2019. It's been quite a- Fucking kill me year so far and this is only the beginning 2020 is the year that the amico is going to get released and they've only got 10 months and 10 days to do it let's go to start us off we get information regarding the founders edition over on twitter a individually numbered and signed vintage wood grain console with a 50 dollars rfid metal golden ticket gifts i mean but it's like I and Neo sent me a coffee mug. Of course you're going to say, does, yeah, but some people would call, of course call me a shill. But they're not financially supporting me in any way. I'm not sponsored by them in any way. Because they sent me a coffee mug? Like, you don't think that Linus Tech Tip gets swag all the time? Who mentioned me? Certificate, a running man poster, the opportunity to get your console a tad early, and... Talk about slopes. The opportunity to fly to Cal. Why are you sorry you're late, dude? I am here. I always say this. I am here to entertain you. When you show up and want to show up, you're here. Do you want to leave in five minutes and go take a giant shit and eat a Subway sandwich while you're shitting? That's weird. What the fuck is wrong with you? I don't even know where it is. I didn't get rid of it maliciously. I got rid of it because, like, the logo wore out of it. I'm like... Okay, the mug, the, the logo peeled off on it. Quality products, Tommy, thank you. The hat I still think is in the closet right here, which I'm, I have all my other review shit there, so I'm not gonna go try to get it. California to have a tour with the team and create slash design a game. Only 2020 will be made. This eventually got changed to 2600, low, low, low. And it was going to cost around about $299 in advance. That low price of below 200, where that, that's just, that's just gone. Just gone. Vance, kinda like. I am done with weed on a daily basis, or, well, a lot. Because it's, it's too much. I'm using it as a crutch, I'm using it as a 
what did someone describe it? They described the best on Twitter. Go check it out. I quote tweeted them because they were 100% on point. Anchor. It's like an anchor. Um, and that has to stop. Like a pre-order. Now, of course, this raised a few eyebrows. Primarily because, one, Tommy said he would never ask people to invest into this machine before they had the chance to play it. Mm -hmm. And two, a certain couple of people, you know. So what's going to happen, Chris Dennis? You had a big plate of Chinese food. This is why I hate Chinese food. You're going to shit. You're going to be hungry. You're going to shit or whatever. Either way, the order varies. Um... And you're going to be hungry again like three hours later like you never ate anything. Who saw this as crowdfunding? When it's a venture that hasn't, when it's a company that hasn't put out a product before. Yeah. And they're asking for pre-orders. It then falls into the same category as, as something like uh, you, you want to bring up the Atari VCS, you can. Uh, be, because you're asking for money for the promise of a product to come out. Um, it's crowdfunding. Extremely vague tech specs drop onto the website showing that the system is far from powerful. Granted, this is something that they've Two gigs of RAM. Uh, actually never suggested themselves. Kind of. It will be easier for developers to create 2D games on the Amico than it is to create 2D games on, say, a PlayStation 4 or a PlayStation 5. Regardless, why this system is st why because the hardware is limited and it can't do anything else. Still being talked about positively by pretty much every big YouTuber out there, as seen here in this awesome sizzle reel. You got John Riggs, Metal Jesus, John Hancock, RGT85, Mad Little Pixel, Tipster, and Rerez. I've spoken to all of these people and they are very trustworthy, among many others. Not only is this done to raise awareness, but of course, even though. Which is funny, you never see Pat and E. Why have I haven't why haven't I been on any of these sizzle reels as far as I know? Maybe because I didn't say anything straight up glowing about the Amico? Hmm. It's almost like I was skeptical too. Uh I'm very excited, uh, Pat, to buy a copy of Cheetah Mintu that we we're doing how did that work out? Notice Pat has not mentioned that he was in that ad. Or that sizzle reel for i think it was indiegogo or kickstarter want to talk about that pat that you had a bone to pick with me at a convention the first time i met you there's i don't know anyone who purchased that can i get one show me the website dude i know i'm a snake in the grass but i would love to know funny how you, funny how you try to throw you at a hard on pat to throw my credibility under the bus this was like yes i finally get back to rich from that stupid softball that you got offended by video i made on diablo immortal back in the day and you were all bona fide to like you shill you hack you and ian i don't see ian why aren't you critical of pat going on that indiegogo for uh cheetah men too you should discuss that Oh, wait, because it's you. It's a double standard, right? Even though I never was a shill for the Amiga. I don't give a fuck I was wearing the shirt during the thing. I didn't... I would I have hindsight 2020 if I was not in a trance and didn't want to do the interview. Would I have worn that shirt? No, it was stupid. I just didn't think. And that is... I swear on my kids' lives, that's the only reason why I wore that. If I thought, I would have put on... I would have put on a dress and looked like... I would have wore anything else. I would have wore a dress and looked like Cinderella before I wore that fucking thing. Oh, it's not crowdfunded. These sorts of things are done to obviously bring in more investors, which we will get to in a little bit. And it's going to become the best-selling console of all time. Like, who would say that? Speaking of raising money... It's still great news for the company as Tommy claims that they have just secured a cool $150 million for manufacturing. And even better, why are they sifting through garbage? Well, actually, why are they sifting through garbage? I know why. That $150 million isn't part of the $30 million they raised to get it to launch. Wow. $180 million. Ain't no way they messing this up. Also, let's add the remake of Thunder Castle to the list. And Royal Chase. 
and Las Vegas Poker and Blackjack and Golf and Texas Hold'em and finally a family friendly Mutant League game. Wow. Now Talking all this shit, all these games and no one's played really behind closed doors. No one's really played the console. Seven new games, six of which are all teased, rumored or flat. Isn't that 3D, Tommy? That's out confirmed in a single day. Can you see why the Atari Age forums were just so goddamn popular? It's the place where Tommy not only confirmed that focus testing. The Atari Moto is hardware. It's funny how it is still worth their time to produce new dance games for the Wii. I think it'll be interesting to see marketing unfolds here in a few months. ...took place, but also the results. Surprisingly, every single person loved the system. Of course they did, because even if they didn't, or they were like, even if they said, yeah, it's okay, like the Tommy, so, so what do you think of the system? Yeah, that's all right. Oh, so you think it's great. Thank you. And granted, Tommy's a worse person than Phil. But you see the parallel. But you see the parallels, though. Like when Phil, I can't believe when he watched the crit, voice critical going. I think the highlight of his career is going to be when he jerked off on stream. Uh, Got to give him credit though. After he jerked off, he just started, and he was saying this sarcastically, which any person would realize who self who has any self awareness. That he just you know, jerked off and started playing games. That was a top G maneuver. And Phil... Oh, look, I'm talking about Phil again. Phil went on to be like, yeah, you know, he really made it like after I, I persevered after that happened. It's like, yes, Phil, you persevered. You beat off on stream and you just kept going like nothing happened. You were like Rocky Balboa. Like, no, Phil, he wasn't saying that because he was like, wow, I'm really impressed. It was sarcasm. But in his mind, just like Tommy, like they filter things to hear what they want to hear. Like, wow, he's, he thought I really was had the strength to pull through. No, he was making fun of you. <laughs> Coming soon to the Amico, beat him and eat. Imagine Tommy announced that. Tommy stands on a roof jacking off and you control Ian and... Come on. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny, though. I won't hit the applause again because I'd be spamming it at that point. And would ask for it for Christmas for $229. Damn. All those haters out there that are skeptical about this system, they are very much... Yeah, I know, tie-dye. And, like, I watched part of his react stream, got bored, and the next thing I know, YouTube's algorithm is showing me videos from his King of Hate channel from, like, 37 years ago. Deserving of a retaliation video once this thing comes to market. <laughs> I'm only joking. Only a psychopathic CEO of a multi, multi, multi million dollar company would ever have all the Amico will fail videos in a folder and will enjoy making a video of all of the negative initial reactions. Yeah, that's not weird at all. That's not we Oh, man, I'm in a folder on Tommy's PC somewhere. He probably looks like... He probably watches those videos and he looks like Buffalo Bill from Silence Little Fucking Labs. <laughs> oh, would you fuck me? I'd fuck me. He would fuck... Tommy would absolutely fuck himself. Yo. Dude, I'm telling you, bro. He fucking lose. He watches those videos like probably once a week, and that's me being generous. Probably watches them more and loses his fucking body to this day. Oh dear, oh dear. Let's hope that that isn't true. Hundred percent is. I know it's speculation. I give you credit for saying that it's speculation slopes, but it's true. Fucking 500%, bro. Uh, I don't even watch your streams, but good for you for quitting weed if you are serious. Yes, I am. I'm going to do it like a few times a year. Like I drink alcohol like a few times a year, but that's it. The daily shit's done. 
I recently quit too. I've been a smoker for close to 15 years. I'll be 39 in April. It's just a bad habit for me. I don't smoke it, I will say. Um, but yeah, it's just a crutch, dude. Needs to stop. Needs to stop. Welcome to the church of May 1st. Oh, God. The thirst of May 1st. Well, yeah, he jacks himself off. Yeah, and I've also heard other things. Uh, I hear rumors that Tommy is single again. Those are rumors. And look, people put out malicious st stuff when they hate somebody. So take it with a grain of salt. But... Oh well, another day, another chance to get the fanboys all excited, which is exactly what happened when Tommy showed off this lovely running gif of Earthworm Jim on Twitter. Another podcast, this time it's with Next Level Gaming, where he shows off the early printed case for the machine. So, so this is the system. Oh, oh there yeah. it is. Nice. It, nice. Uh, oh. See the light and stuff. And the they all sound like they're about to bust a nut. Like, what's so exciting? Like, oh, there's... Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the <laughs> way it works. I'll actually, I'll show you around the back. No one's ever seen this before. Oh, um, oh that's <laughs> awesome. He also confirmed. Yeah, oh my God, there's holes. Comes <laughs> that the reason the system has now increased. I never smoked it, but I had increased in value is because people will think it's not good enough at only $150. Remember that market research from a few days ago? The price increase is the result of that. That and they changed the screen from a resistive touchscreen to a competitive touchscreen, among other things. And people were like, oh, it's 150 bucks. I guess it's not good then. Like that, like, mm -hmm. it's like, no, no, it is good. We also get hints that the original Echo team are back again. For the that was his excuse. People were like, oh, it's too cheap. So we had to make it more expensive because they didn't think it was good. I have never in my life for a game console heard that ever that new spiritual successor to the franchise I'm, I'm just gonna i'm gonna go crazy here for a second let's go to dreamland here for a second wouldn't it be amazing what if spencer nielsen stop. and Tom, stop. and tommy Rico stop were to get together oh. and do the soundtrack for a new echo game uh that's it i'm done mm. <laughs> Surprisingly, he also confirms that. Have oh my god, these guys need to relax. Jesus Christ. You scrapped any games yet that were that that weren't passing the quality level you expect from the developers? The answer is yes. At E3, we had 22 playable games. We came out of E3 holding on to 17 of them. So 5 oh. of them didn't make uh, didn't make the cut to keep going. So games, so you, ch hold on, that's ridiculous. So you showed games off that you didn't think were up to snuff? Why? That's a bad, so you showed games that you didn't think were up to your level of quality publicly? Like, why wouldn't you do this before? Oh my God. Only time I've heard of that is controllers and TVs. Yeah, so, wow. so we're uh, we're dedicated to this. We're not What's joking up, around. Shook. Wow, fair play. He definitely isn't playing around. But then he also says that Qbert and other Sony properties are coming to the system too. Craziness is about to ensue. So, so you know, there's a lot of different versions of Sony. There's Sony Computer Entertainment. They right. do with PlayStation. But then there's Sony Pictures, right? Uh, so, like Sony Columbia Music. Uh, Sony Pictures does Wheel of Fortune, Jeopardy, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Um, so Sony reached out to us and said, hey, we'd like to put Qbert on, you know, let's figure out a way where we can put Qbert uh, on the system. So we're talking to Sony wow. right now. And keep in mind before you was saying that Sony, he was calling him out because Sony was copying ideas from his controller, which of course wasn't true. But now Sony wants to bring a game to the Amico. You can't make this up. You can't make any of this up. Uh, it's nice. about putting Qbert and some of their other properties on our system. Uh, yeah. Lemmings? Lemmings? No. <laughs> Who owns Lemmings? Is that uh, Sony? Sony owns Sony Lemmings too? Yeah. 
Oh, okay, cool. I'll, I'm going to talk to him about that for sure. Multiplayer of course he is. Got to of do course he, I, he, oh yeah, you could mention any game to him. I'm telling you. Tommy, it was, go back in time. Tommy, Elden Ring coming to, yeah, hey, we're in talks with From Software. Miyazaki's a close friend of mine. Yeah, exactly, Dag. He's making it up on the fly. Do it. Yeah. Yes. It'll be interesting. Mmm, let's move on. Past the point when Spy vs. Spy is added to the list of upcoming games, past the point where he talked about opening an office in China. We have offices in, um, in Europe. We have an office in Dubai. We're looking at China right now. We might have a big, uh, like a big announcement in a few weeks. Of I don't know who that is. I've only watched a few episodes about, of it. you know, opening an office in China, in television China. Past the point where he's Daystalker. Not sure if he typed this wrong or if it's a new kiddie version of Night Stalker. Regardless, let's get it on the list. To the point when we get to see more gameplay footage of the game itself. As in Night Stalker, not Daystalker. Again, it genuinely looks pretty damn good. A nice upgrade from the original game, as I'm sure you will all agree. Shame about the Android buttons in the trailer though at the end. Let's hope they don't appear in the final product. Back on the Atari Age forums, Tommy denies all claims that he asked Patanian to sign an NDA regarding the Amico. Oh, and by the way, we're going to go really far into the future for this bit, but when I eventually started speaking to Tommy, I gave him a little bit of business advice. I said to him, you should get people, me and others that you're talking to about the Amico, to sign an NDA. He actually thought it was a really good idea, but he never did it. We finally get to see what the lenticular poster is going to look like for those founder backing pre-order fans, as well as the pin and the patch. But more importantly on YouTube, old John Alvarado gives us a demonstration of dice being rolled on the controller and then being poured out onto the big screen. Now look, that looks so awkward. I'm not sure why you'd want to be under an NDA. I'm confused by that. Okay, so when I buy the, with this with VR, my bubbles in my basement need to relax and this will not be coming down here. I'm not coming down here anymore. The hot tub's too hot. Just say, this is pants. Thank you, Digital. Why? Mark. Well, one, they're not even showing off the controller. It's a phone. Yep. So therefore, this functionally is not part of the it will only ever work on the Amico controller sales pitch. Two, unless you're rolling them onto a small screen, it's never gonna look right. And three, again, this really isn't very impressive at all because your TV doesn't have a sensor on it. So therefore, like the Wii did, all it's doing is looking for your controller and looking for you to turn it upside down and then they will appear on the screen. It, it's not impressive, guys. Yeah, exactly. And also, spoiler alert, this has never been seen to be working on an Amico controller. And Which is bizarre. When you see the specs of those controllers, you'll question if it ever could. What does look good, however, is Astro Smash, of course. Everyone's opinions are going to be differing here, but as a retro nut, this was yet again one of the exclusive games I was looking forward to playing. Credit where credit is due, if you ask me, it was one of the games that got people excited for the system and helped them sell out of the Woodgrain Founders editions that went on sale today. Yep, they fully sold out. 1,000 went in 5 minutes, 1,500 in 15 minutes, 2,000 were gone in an hour, 2,300 in 3 hours, 2,500 in 5 hours, and then they shut it off at the 6 hour mark when 2,600 got sold. And crazier still... And, but that's not even like huge numbers, man. Like, even for something indie and niche. They could have sold... 10,000 of these things, which took Atari weeks to do over on Indiegogo. <laughs> Not doing more than 2,600 will also hopefully lay to rest the ridiculous hater notion that we were being sketchy or only doing this for the money, or whatever the conspiracy theory of the day was. 
Time for another game to be added to the list. This time, it's Tropical Trouble Reimagined. And the same month that Larry Chen joins the company, that's the 25th person to join the company, by the way, and there are definitely a whole lot more. We have over 300 people. Tommy is kicking off over on Atari Age, as there's a brand new of newcomer, course. Tony TGD. Tommy explains that parental controls on the Nintendo Switch are too complex for some parents and therefore they don't put them in place, which is less than ideal as the Switch has more adult content than both Sony and Microsoft's offering. I quote, The Switch has the most adult, violent, oh mature God. and even irrup content that the others do not. And this is something he has brought up several times. One of the big issues I have with the Nintendo Switch is that there's more pornographic material and, and violent material and killing than any other system out there. Well, let me repeat that. There's more killing and violent material. Uh, because when you think of Nintendo, you think... Wow, another person looking totally bored as Tommy's not shutting the fuck up. What a coincidence. Think of family, right? Yeah. And... But, but, you know, there's articles, you can read the articles in the Wall Street Journal where, where Sony, PlayStation, and Microsoft restrict... And, like, I'm not saying this to be an elitist dick. Like, who is this guy? Like, does he have, like, ten subs? And I'm, I hate saying that because I, I, I hate the sub flex number, but it is bizarre. What my point is, you're starting a company. Work up. Why are you talking to this guy? Why were you even talking to me? Rich. They won't show certain things on their platform. Nintendo does. So you can get the same game on PlayStation and Nintendo and the and the full genitalia, child rear, molestation, and drug use. That stuff is shown on the Switch version and not on the PlayStation version. It's crazy. I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. Well, I just play loop. I'm done with weed on a daily basis. I'm doing it like a few times a year just like alcohol you know it'll be on occasion stop using it as a crutch I mean, it's on my switch so that's you know <laughs> that's, that's a great game one plan. he did the same to me when i spoke to him and i I kind of do understand the angle he's going for here. I mean, I have created a couple of jokey videos myself looking at perverted video games for the Switch, one of which has even got demonetized due to its content. But from my research, nothing is based around child yope. It's a real stretch based on what is on that system. Violence, yes, of course, plenty of it. Lewd stuff, again, plenty of it. In the game Peach Ball, you need to bounce your pinball against the girl's almost Yankee body. In Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball, you have a mode that allows you to take pictures of the girls. Panty. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's so weird. The only mature game I can think of as excessive, exclusively is Bayonetta games. Well, yeah, like he's showing these games, but he Tommy made him like of another level. Like I think he said, and this is me quoting him here: "Rape games that have rape games that have." And it's like, dude. And secondly, the parental controls are not hard. Tea party comes with a pair of panties. Although, to be fair, the game itself couldn't be further away from Tommy's claims. It's just a third-person game where you control a flying pair of knickers. That is the weirdest thing it I've ever really seen. It really is no different than a kid's book that has the word pants on it or bums on it. Simply because it's funny. Surprise, Cho and Nikki's not on To say the word underpants. And the infamous Gal Gun series is a collection of games where you shoot the pheromone gun at your high school friends, which results in them collapsing in ecstasy. <laughs> and these, well, these are the games that he's talking about. Well, this is the main game he's talking about, at least. This is the one game that Tommy Tallarico and the Amico cultists like to share about. Like I said, it's Gal Gun. And the awesome folks at PQ, when I told them I was making this video, sent me these boxes over. <laughs> Let's take a look inside. Yeah, I played it on so, PS3. So, we've obviously got the box. That's where uh, the games that come separately are uh, very nice. We have the characters. Oh, no, 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 no. That's way too risque for the Switch. 
Are you scared? Come on. Are you scared? <laughs> This is so ridiculous. Okay, okay. So this is the DIY tentacle kit. Look, hey, if you know, you know. Let's uh, let's open this up. Pair of stockings. DJ Slope Game Studio. Right, yeah, enough of that. And you got this little, I can't pick anything up now. <laughs> I genuinely can't pick anything up now. <laughs> like, see, that to me is so weird. <laughs> this is so hard to undo everything now. <laughs> Okay, okay, so this is the other set. This is the other set. And, oh my god, this is so hard to hold stuff. You got them? <laughs> what did they call this? What did they call this? Oh, this is the birthday suit edition. I, I, this isn't going to fit me. Yeah, no, I'm it's not, not going to fit you. getting sponsored for this video. Oh no, I'm going to rip it. Oh no. There we go. There's a book. And uh, yeah, I mean, I have looked in the book. I, 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 <laughs> the book is a little risque. It is censored. Uh, what else is in the birthday suit edition? Ah. <laughs> You got some pins and a coin. Very nice, very nice. Back when I used to put soundtracks to games in my videos, this was a soundtrack that was pretty good. It's a pretty good soundtrack, I will say that. Uh, postcards, and then another inlay for the uh, game. Yeah, the, I can't pick anything up. There it is. Gal Gun's name. Um, yeah. Now, after doing a bit more research and speaking with publishers on the Switch, it may be surprising to you that Sony requires more censorship in recent years than Nintendo does in specific regions. That is a fact. Take yeah, it is a fact. That's true. Nekapura, for instance, a visual novel that is again more censored on Sony's platform than it is on Nintendo's, removing the jiggling physics and cutting out entire sections because of Sony's tighter grip on censorship. So, in short, yes, Rude games do exist, and obviously violent games do exist for the Switch, but to go after the games that I'm talking about here and the games that Tommy is talking about here, you're not going to be able to go into any random shop and pick these up. You're not going to find these next to Mario Kart, Mario Party, stuff like that. You're not going to have to go all. online and find them, and they're not easy to find because of their obscurity and their limited print run. And, well, two, <laughs> to go as far as the call these yep games, or sorry, scrub that, child games come on and you know what my daughter's been playing on the xbox recently peppa pig you can't get more child friendly than bloody yeah, peppa seriously. pig right it's on xbox game Pass. and no i'm not going to be showing you gameplay footage because i mean come on who would do that Back on the Atari age forum tony tgd asked him to clarify even why he's lying about the competition I haven't played My Wife Loves Galgun, and I've never played Dead or Alive. I had it for PS4, but I never played it. In order to give evidence of these child wreck games. Once again, you show your complete lack of professionalism and journalistic ability with the way you go about your business and word your questions. This is exactly the point I've been making to you. You are rude. Who, look at the manifesto he wrote. Who does that remind you of? unprofessional, obnoxious, and negative, calling me a liar because you yourself don't do any research on Again, the look, yes, I do see Phil. what Tommy is trying to say. Phil. I have a kid and I have had to show the parental control app to other uneducated parents, as it's obviously not already on your phone when you take a switch out of its box. And of course, as explained, the system does have lewd content. But the way Tommy's explaining it makes you think that this stuff is the norm and way worse than it actually is, which it definitely isn't. Take Pornhub, for example. Does the existence of pornographic material online mean that I am never going to let my kids use the internet themselves? Of course not. I just got to keep an eye on what they can and can't view on the internet. His critics may be going in hard, but Tommy's responses are even harder. And this is just one of many examples of where Tommy's fan base, AKA the Amico cult, end up fighting the corner for him, which of course in retaliation brings yeah. in more Amico haters. Both sides are getting stronger. Also, if you expect me to- Yeah, the guy doing the voiceover does have a little bit of Chris Chan flavor. That is Continue valid. answering any questions. I want a public apology in this forum for calling me a liar. I want you to admit that you were wrong in your assessment and you were rude and unprofessional in branding me a liar because of your own. 
Oh, fuck you, King Tellerico. Who the fuck? I People can have their opinion on your fucking product. I'm gonna sit there. I'm gonna sit there talking to me. Sitting me down like you're a school teacher and I'm a student. Fuck off. This guy. You owe me an apology. Here, here's my apology. Eat a dick. Until then, don't bother posting any more questions after this, as I will ignore them. You're a real piece of work. And the thing is, he is a liar about everything. Hold on. Yeah, we wake up, Face ID. Tommy then continues to answer his questions, which I will not read out in full as this video is already long enough. All you gotta know is that Tony TGD would eventually be banned from the forum, but not before he truly gets under Tommy's skin. And then Tommy Tallarico, the CEO of Intellivision, retaliates in one of the most ridiculous ways. This is so ridiculous. Tony TGD doesn't believe that Intellivision has the MLB license, as Sony recently extended their contract and therefore, in his eyes, the dates just simply don't line up. And after questioning this, Tommy, to put it lightly, loses his sh I'll make you a bet. If we have it, we can never talk about Intellivision or Amico again in any capacity, you need to immediately delete your account here. And if we don't, then I'll make you CEO of Intellivision because you seem to know so much. Is he? Uh, so he is now the CEO. River Patroller is now the CEO of Intellivision, correct? <laughs> Want to bet, Mr. Know-It-All? Come on, you're always so confident. Take the bet. I, 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 oh, did you? Dude, you would have been the CEO of Intellivision, bro. Which would have meant absolutely nothing. In a fit of rage, Tommy decides to bet the CEO of Intellivision position with Tony TGD. If he couldn't prove that they have the license, he will give that position to... T Tony is now the president of Intellivision. Tony TGD, the Amico hater. And if he can prove that Intellivision does have the license, Tony TGD is never allowed to talk about the Amico again. The yeah, CEO I heard about her of Intellivision, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> so how did this all work out then? Well, supposedly, because the contracts between MLB and Intellivision are, of course, confidential, Tommy rightfully couldn't just go around showing it to anyone. And therefore, he just made a bet to prove something that he couldn't prove. Well, not until a public announcement, at least. Sadly for him, Tommy claimed that because of COVID, the announcement was delayed, even though none of that mattered. All he needed to do was to prove he had the license in March when the bet was made, to win the bet, aka not lose his position as CEO, and I don't know, more importantly to him, get rid of his biggest hater. One day on a random live stream, Tony TGD appeared in the chat and asked for him to own up to his side of the bet. And Tommy does that exact thing by sharing the confidential contract with the hosts of the podcast. Uh, guys, can you look in your Twitter feed right now and read me the date on the top of the Major League Baseball contract, please? Go chat. I, I just sent it to you on Twitter. Okay. Because I'm not going to send him our Major League Baseball contract. That's, you know. February. Can't believe you sent it to other podcasters. Either way, dude, you look like a fucking fool. First. February 1st. 2020. February The effective 1st. date. Effective date, February. Right, we, because we put it together yeah. on, dis, I think it's December. Yeah, 30th. I see it. I'm not yep. lying. I see it. I see it. February 1st. So I, there you go. So yeah. Tony, well, Tony, we can talk about X Series X and PS5. Yeah, he just, he, he, he just can't talk about Amico or me ever again. Don't don't spread that contract around, guys. No, no. That's very no I right. saved it. I saved it. No. Yeah, but never <laughs> never show that publicly. That is not for public consumption, okay. obviously. No, 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 no. And how do you know that wasn't just pulled out of his ass? Because we know Tommy will lie about anything to make him seem right. It's been literally proven with documentaries about him. That, that was just to prove a bet here. 
Oh, wow. This is the CEO of Intellivision. Let's just continue with the timeline. Tommy confirms an air hockey game is coming to the Amico. Tommy also confirms an Animal Crossing-like game is also coming to the Amico. And on the 6th of February 2020, we were privileged with a tour of the Amico headquarters that not only shows us some early prototypes, but more importantly, Tommy himself states that the company still has not handed over the bill of materials for the system. Until we deliver our final BOM, BOM, which is, stands for Build of Materials, yep. which is literally like... How many, how many components? What is a bill of materials, I hear you ask? Well, it's essentially a list of components that goes into a thing. This isn't really the be-all and end-all of the system. I mean, every single console goes through this process, trying to find out how to get things cheaper, even by a penny or so. The problem is, we are only eight months away from customers getting this thing. So much manufacturing. Ain't shit. Bring shipping and testing, among many other things, needs to get done quickly to meet that date. And yet, the CEO still seems to be popping up on podcast. And Tommy will use that picture for his next video games live. What is that from like 1986? He has a mullet. And fighting back against quote unquote haters every single day. Surely the time to show them what you've got is now. And one of the haters that brought this up was Kevtris. Now, Kevtris at the time was an unknown individual on the Atari Age forums that was trying to give Tommy advice directly, saying that he shouldn't reply to every single little negative thing and instead just get the job done. As just one example from around about this date shows him when CPU Wiz gave him his two cents. Your console is going to suck adult balls. <laughs> now, of what? course, come on. Any normal CEO of a multi-million dollar console soon to be released wouldn't rise to such an obvious playground filled foolery, right? Well, no, nope. of course he does. Well, this is no normal CEO. Considering most adults like getting their balls sucked, I'm taking this as a compliment. Oh my god. Considering most adults like getting their balls sucked, I'm taking this as a compliment. I kept my money in symbolically. It's still there. It's in Phil Adams' pocket. <laughs> where's my, where's my amico, Mr. Adam? I know you're busy sending out a fucking email once every six months and you're getting paid six figures to do it, but where's my amico? Yeah, can, could you picture... Your cut, like someone says it about the PS5. Your console's gonna suck adult balls. Well, considering most adults like getting their balls sucked, I'm gonna take this as a compliment. Thank you. <laughs> I ain't getting no fucking refund, Mari. It's over. Who's messaging me now? Why? Why now? Why now? And I have to look at it because if it's important, and I miss something. Oh, it's Google Fish saying shrimp to me. Thank you. Um, oh, it hurts. 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 Well, stop. This is just not the way. The CEO of Intellivision. Like, could you imagine being like. And the thing is, he had a whole bunch of yes-men around him, so it's like, oh, yes, it's a great idea. Tell a troll as the CEO on the internet to, that you enjoy getting your ball sucked. <laughs> oh, God. Should be acting. And... All Kevdris was trying to do was just give him a little bit of friendly advice after he saw him go on yet another very long, over one hour long interview with a YouTuber that got less than 50 views because they said they didn't like the Amico. I doubt that the CEO of McDonald's searches YouTube every 10 minutes for videos bashing Mickey D's. And he's not wrong. He goes on to explain that he has been behind three different console launches himself. He spends six to eight hours a day coding and more at the weekends and most definitely does not troll YouTube multiple times a day looking for glitches in the matrix. Oh my god, he's so... Tommy's coding? He ain't coding shit. 
fuck off. As he puts it, of course Tommy didn't want to hear any of it, as his project is obviously different than whatever crap Kevtris was dishing out. I'm paraphrasing here, by the way, he never actually called it crap. In fact, although he goes on to disagree constantly with every single point that Kevtris brings to the table, he does try his best to stay respectable. Now I'm curious, which products have you created? Would love to purchase a few in support of what you're doing, if I don't own them already. Turns out that Kevtris is behind a little known company known as Analog. I've even got a couple of the systems myself. I got plenty of them. So yeah. Love analog shit. Therefore, Kevtris was perfectly qualified to give Tommy Tallarico advice. But still, Tommy didn't want to hear it. But he, you know, did stay respectful. It's amazing that you were pretty much a one-man show, but I hope you can appreciate and understand the vast differences of what we are doing. And although there may be some similarities, it's a very different project in many ways. How? Like, that's, it just shows you he had these fucking delusions of grandeur. Like, he thought that he was going to have the next fucking Switch. He thought he was going to have the next Wii. Like, he, in his fucking delusional, psychotic mind, he really thought he was going to sell, like, 50 million of these things. It's unbelievable. Tommy confirms that every game... And here's the thing. The Amico is vaporware. Analog makes amazing products. Game will come in seven languages. A downgraded R-type game and Worms are both coming to oh. the Amico apparently. Believe it or not, this one turned out to be a lie, as the original creator of Worms stated himself. I created Worms, so no, you didn't, Tommy. According to Tommy himself, Wait, he lied about creating Worms. The company is now in the completion phase, just waiting on the bits from China with only two months left to go for testing. Oh yeah, they hid behind coronavirus so hard. Then confirms yet another game, Space Spartans. And just when you think he says yes to everything, unfortunately EA have the rights to everything Baby Yoda. And therefore no Amico Mando game is available Wait. right now. He does however have the right to Cosmic Arc. He teases a harmonics game. Okay, this one's confusing. Someone asked if the Amico will have superhero games like Spider-Man and Batman, and he responds... Yes, but not on launch. Um, okay. So I guess we are now getting Spider-Man and Batman. It's ridiculous. Dude, he just everything. And games now... But even saying Star Wars was like, yeah, that's a bridge to... I can, I, I can lie about everything. I could lie about 70% of my career, but I can't lie about having a, a license for Star Wars. Good, that's good, Tommy. At least you have some boundaries. Oh, two. And if that's still not enough, Intellivision put out a sizzle reel of games and also go on record to say that the VIP pre-orders will be going live on March 31st. Yes, more pre-orders. <laughs> And taking a AKA crowdfunding hidden behind pre orders. Quick look at the gameplay found in this trailer we have that Echo inspired game Dolphin Quest, which, by the way, is a failed Kickstarter known as Big Blue, or more than likely the prequel Little Blue, which, according to the Echo the Dolphin wiki, <laughs> was to be a free game. Regardless, that was, you know, a long time ago, and this new version looks like it's now coming to the Switch anyway. The auto race game, you will notice, has a wobbly camera because it's an unfinished VR game, and this part of the trailer is ripped directly from the company that made it. Oh my god. Meaning that it's 100% not being played on an Amico, nor is Evil Kinesis. It's being played on like a fucking Oculus. Or wait, meta, meta. I don't want Mark Zuckerberg to buttfuck me. Sorry, Mark, meta. Evil. Yes, supposedly this was one of the games that was played by... You don't want to be butt-fucked, trust me. ...the likes of John Riggs and Metal Jesus, but what is seen here, in this trailer again, is 100% not running on an Amico system. Want proof? Here we have the trailer for said game released five years earlier for mobile phones. 
The overhyped DICE demo is of course still being played on a mobile phone, not the Amico controllers. And finally, the emoji demo is again ripped straight from a trailer released years earlier. This one is extra dodgy, as the trailer shows official Apple licensed emojis not used on any other platform. Now, I don't know about you, but I highly yeah, there's a, I could watch that. I really doubt that Tommy Tallarico has paid Apple a licensing fee for those Apple emojis, right? Oh, okay, I take it back. Apparently, he did. Yes, emojis are absolutely copyrighted. Unless, of course, you make your own or pay a license, like we did. He didn't pay shit. He's such a fucking liar. What do you reckon? Did Apple authorize the use of their exclusive emojis for this upcoming system, the Amico? Believe what you want to believe, this trailer brings us loads more games that we need to add to the list. You got Safe Cracker, Pool, Cornhole, Colossal Crash, Diner Blaster, Back to Party, Evil Knievel, Fargle, and. And all of it looks like shit, minus like a few exceptions. That's the thing I don't like. It, someone made. Um, like a joke because like they just showed so much at E3 that awkward E3 conference and it's like oh no you want this right why are you such a fucking bird I don't understand Sexy Coco, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm hard, I'm a man, I'm a man who was hard my penis. My penalization is the amalgamation of years of hard work, man. You know what I'm saying? I sexy out sexualize these bitches for breakfast, motherfucker. Most important factualization about me is my love for the PS triple, man. You know what I'm saying? Eat my ass. Now, usually the rule is that you gotta say take the shirt off, but it's it's Sexy Coco. It just goes without saying. <laughs> We're in talks with Mike Tyson. They're in talks with everybody. In television, was in talks with Bill Gates. Moji Charades and Cloudy Mountain. The very next day, Tommy confirms that a bingo game is on the way. Catan is also confirmed a few days later, and then he gets his first big positive break within the world of YouTube influencers with Rich from Review Tech USA. But yeah, in regards to Intellivision, you know, so okay. I can't believe I was wearing the hoodie. Coronavirus, blah, 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 you gotta bring it up, right? We're still on track for 10 10 2020 launch. How it affects us right now immediately is that we're not going to be able to put out as many, like to manufacture as many of the products as we want. Because, you know, at, at, at the beginning, I'm like, look. Oh wow, I look bored and silent like everybody else. I'm gonna, I wanna make this whole thing in the USA, to, you know, freaking USA, go, go America and all this stuff. A skinnier me there, that's why. Another reason I'm slowing down the weed too. And that was kind of, um, you know, again, not knowing all of the intricacies of everything. But the reality is, Rich, is that 80% of the stuff that makes electronics. I honestly, I'm going to keep it real with you. This may sound terrible, and I'm kind of exposing myself metaphorically. Is I don't think I was paying attention to 90% of what he was saying. And, and again, let's specifically talk about in television. Can only be made in China and bought in China, and that's the issue. It you couldn't if you wanted to pay triple for it, you couldn't because it doesn't exist. This stuff just isn't even produced and manufactured anywhere else except China. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention to a fucking thing. Pat and Ian are not best pleased. Tommy, here we go. It begins. The war begins. Had a one hour and one minute long, I can't call it an interview, uh, cause it's not. It's a f infomercial for the Amico with our friend uh, Rich from Review Tech USA. They were so happy that they could 
twist this into something. They were waiting. They were fucking waiting since 2018 since we made that video on them because they were so butthurt. I guarantee you Ian's penis is throbbing under that desk. Uh, good job, Rich, saying absolutely nothing of worth or asking any hard questions during the interview. You nailed it, buddy. Um, hit it right out of the goddamn park. Uh, Hard-hitting journalism. <laughs> Tough stuff, man. Uh, you look good in that Intellivision Amico Fnickhoff sweatshirt, you goddamn tool. You Fnickhoff sellout, you Fnickhoff hack. Which, of course, gained itself a retaliation from the Amico supporters, too. You see, this right here is exactly why Pat and Ian are not taken seriously in the retro video game scene today. They just try way too freaking hard to get people to pay attention to them. For me, looking back, it's this exact point in the timeline that's quite eye-opening. Sure, we've had skeptics and we've had blind supporters, but the more Tommy and yeah, and I was cautiously optimistic from the beginning. I have the receipts from videos if you want to dig through them all to, to prove it. His crew went out of their way to fight back against the criticism. The Soon as that happened with Ian, I'm like, all right, dude, gloves off, you fucking clowns. Let's go, dude. More the big boys got involved. And for me, it was right here where we really did start to see a major shift from the supporters to the cultists and the skeptics to the haters. Of course, labeling either side as such is lazy. And for the most part, besides the odd few examples, of course. Yeah, I don't think he, I will make him aware tomorrow about the butthurt they already had for me and why they hate me and Jay so much. It's just simply incorrect. They even took, I forgot about this, these fucks. When Tommy made that stupid fucking Little Mermaid comment to me, and I'd be like, hey, you want a little lap dance for him? I'm like, yeah, sure. Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're like, yeah, you want a lap dance from a 60? Like, it's a fucking cartoon character, and I didn't know Rage. I know I brought this up before, but I'm just bringing the point home. Like, anything. The handprint on Frank's with no picture of a child. It's just a blood red handprint that Jay made fun of. Or whatever, or I did, I don't, or we both did. That's a child's handprint. All right, all right, fucking Karen, Karen Ferguson. Breaking news: Tommy's cousin is Steven Tyler. <laughs> I am not putting underwear on my head. Correct. But this is how each side saw each other. Even if you were an innocent passerby looking in, if you had the slightest bit of criticism or praise towards the Amico. Yeah, I'll let him know that their hatred for me goes way back. Um, hot take, DSP is more successful than Pat and Ian. I, nah, Pat's book did pretty well. I don't know about that. I don't know, but DSP never gave up and at least cuts his hair. Well, I don't know. Pat's probably dating some woman that likes a fucking mushroom on his head. She's like, not only do I want the mushroom in the pants, your head needs to look like a mushroom. And he's like, all right, cool, yeah. Hand jobs all around. Then it's likely that you would be labeled as, well, a hater or a cultist. And it was only going to be getting more decisive from here on out. And in this video, I want to give them a little bit of help on how to get better so that they don't come off as such jackasses going forward. Anyway. The next day we get confirmation that the Amico is getting a cooking game. Hasbro have been kind to Tommy and Co. 2 as an Amico version of Clue and Life are both coming to the Amico 2. And then a couple... Because when they, they are just like the quartering name Tommy too and all you pick the people tickle television how many times do you call me a pedophile because I because I dare watch Vosh that is the only thing he's like he just flat out says you realize you realize quantum I could fucking sue you you piece of shit right flat out call me a pedophile I have three kids and you're calling me a pedophile because I've watched Vosh with something that's been debunked about him a billion times but it's the same, they don't care. Like, this is part of the reason why they aren't respected, because they, they let their emotions get in the way, and I could get pissed off too, 
But here's the thing. I wouldn't pull that shit. Okay? I wouldn't go... Like, if the video was in reverse and they said the things about, like, they were joking. Like, I had a Frank, which is still a bizarre relationship between him and Pat. I don't, I don't care. It's just strange. If I had a Frank and there was someone with a red handprint in the background, dude, I wouldn't do, like, oh, it's a child. I wouldn't try to insinuate that they were attacking children. I'd be like, they didn't fucking know. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, they don't care about evidence i've even defended the fucking piece of shit the quartering before of phil i don't dislike but he's done a bunch of everyone thinks i dislike him but i don't when phil is right about stuff i'm like nah, he has a point there but they won't do that once you bruise their ego they will try to spin things even if there's nothing there to make you look bad it's the same thing quantum does it's the same thing basement pisser does and they're the same fucking way if they don't like you, they will do whatever they need to do to damage you. And I don't fucking care. They could eat a dick. Review Eat a Dick USA today, today, huh? A couple of days later, over on Twitter, we finally get to see what those five packing games are going to be. You got skiing, sh shark shark, astro smash, cornhole, farkle, and the very next day, they announced that the system was going to be getting a sixth packing game too but they didn't want to announce that one just yet. Yep, six packing games, not five. And here is yet another sizzle reel of those games, including that stupidly bog standard dice game, Fargle, still be- Well, dude, like I've, I, I know I'm gonna be repeating myself right here, and a lot of you heard this before. Why do you think that people become friends in this business? Is it because they want their asses covered? It's not that really... Let me let you in on something. When you become an adult, there's only... Sometimes people want companionship, but that's the exception. There's two reasons why people befriend other people when they're adults. If it could further their career or they want to fuck them. Oh, let's all be friends. We're all... we Like, okay, I could see if you work at a job together. or But, like, beyond that, no. That's not how adults work. I know it sounds cold and fucked up, but it's just the reality of it. You're either going to make someone money or you're going to have sex. Beyond that, now there's exceptions, like I said, where you work. Like, I'm friends with Jay. We met through work. You know, I'm friends with Camelot. We met through work. Those are exceptions. But generally, that's the rule. There's some people here who are going to... I've just seen it in real life, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just what it is i see especially in the entertainment business man straight up being played on. like if you work at an office job i could see you becoming friends and keeping friends there on a phone not a controller as well as skiing shark shark yeah but where did you meet those friends were you at a job with them um were they from school where did you meet those friends that's the difference i'm not saying that look intro guys my friend we ain't butt fucking you don't want to be butt fucked. Trust me. Or enhance, yeah. Well, that's business too, but good point, Mojo. Or enhance someone's public image. I'm not saying there isn't exceptions, but generally, that's the way it goes, dude. It sucks. I don't like it. Uh, Astro Smash, and of course, Con Hole. Uh, th 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 no, no, wait. Oh, Con Hole. <laughs> I am. He brought in Beavis. I like this guy even more now. <laughs> okay. Mistakes get made. The best thing to do is just to own up to it and give a massive thumbs up to the first person that noticed it, right? <laughs> we fixed that about a month ago. I thought it was kind of funny, so I left it in the trailer to see if anyone would notice. This comes. Jesus Christ. He tries to spin everything. Coming from the same guy who. Like, I know that's a hot take that a lot of people, you know, it, it kind of makes people get divided on. I'm just saying, from, I think if you were especially in, because I, I guess I kind of am in the entertainment business, granted most of it's from my house, you would probably see it more. It also, I would say the only small asterisk I would put to that, it depends on the business. But no, that's not even true, man. I know people who worked at restaurants who would like... 
fuck the fucking boss in hopes of like literally. And they they would it would literally protect their asses in more ways than one. Like Welcome to adulthood, it's fun. Uh me and my girl talked about this yeah, we can make friends with people of the opposite but we hit we get that it isn't the norm, making friends. Like, yeah, like my friend Patricia, she's like my sister. But we met through work. You know, but that's an, that usually doesn't happen. That's the exception, not the rule. Like, did you think Tommy started talking, to, especially him? Do you think he started talking to me because he thought it was cool? Or he was just like, I don't even know what reason. Hey, Rich, just, just hang out and have coffee one day. Do you think if I didn't have the following on YouTube, he would have came to me and like, Hey, man, how you doing? You're great. No. He wanted to be a parasite and suck off my viewership. Which, all the videos, minus like one flopped with him. So no one cared. Criticized the Tari for misspelling asteroids and Yar's revenge, by the way. Now that is something that should raise a few red flags for folks. A video pops up showing Sideswipers and explains how the Amico is unique in the sense that when you're out of the game, you can try and set traps for those still playing. Just like thousands of other games, for instance, Bomberman. Eventually, this was implied to be a Hot Wheel license game, by the way, for those interested. The next day, those limited edition pre-orders go up for sale, starting at $250 with a refundable $100 deposit. Special editions of the console go as high as $300 within 30 minutes. Tommy claims that 1,000 have been sold. And we- Is that really impressive, though? Lee, that almost half the pre-orders are coming from people that order more than one Amico. People aren't just ordering one, they're ordering two or more. How strange is that? Well, to be fair, it's not as strange as the CEO of a console selling gangbusters for its size to then go on a forum and ask its members to actively promote the system on their own social media platforms, giving them all of the marketing and exact buzzwords to use in order to pull in more pre-orders. Hashtag defeat the haters. Yeah, push my product for free. Oh my god, Hashtag this guy is amazing. Hashtag defeat the haters. We are close to 500 pages into that Atari Age forum. And this sort of stuff is just going down constantly. A quick thank you Good. to I'm everybody so that praises the system and then a real long lengthy response to anybody that has even the slightest bit of criticism going into great detail as to why they are wrong. Also, if it's not responding to the praise and negativity on these forums, he's chasing YouTube channels and trying to get an interview of any single person. I can't wait till he shows the kid because it's so ridiculous. Person he can that talks negatively about this system, especially the CU podcast, who he now calls the PU podcast. We all Because that's so clever. But he talked about that hardcore divide over on YouTube and obviously the same. And dude, he could have, it's four hours and he could have probably made this thing fucking like seven hours like that Castlevania retrospective. There's just so much. Same thing was happening over on Atari Age. It didn't matter what tiny bit of criticism or praise you had, you were getting dragged either way. And whether he meant for this to happen or not, old Tommy was the one conducting. Why is a Freddie Mercury like man in a church with tattoos I'm like this is the, the loudest orchestra that the mini console wars had ever seen? Yeah, that is true. I have never seen more of a fight for a console that never existed. As we make our way into April and television, of course, gets itself more workers. We get another game tease. This time it's an NWA RPG. Yeah. Venture Beat, who interviewed Tommy, confirmed that more than 10,000 pre-orders have now been placed. Yahtzee's coming to the Amico. A Funko Pop running man is coming. To why not? And just in case you want further proof that Tommy can't even take the smallest bit of criticism, here he is. This is, this is so stupid. Here, we go. here he is here we being go. interviewed by Tony TGD. For those that don't oh, remember, Tony TGD, aka the Geek Getaway, is besides Pat and Ian, Tommy's biggest critic. The difference is, and no offense to Tony, 
He's not exactly a big channel. Tommy knew going in that he would be getting roasted by this guy, and he did it anyway. He simply just could not let a small channel talk badly about his upcoming system. I think we should just go ahead and you know, before we start, I want to say that Tommy did not pay me anything. I've been checking my mailbox. There's no Amico. There's no- uh, no, no, I didn't pay you. <laughs> so, I mean, since you're swear, I was going to keep it PG because the Amico crowd is E10, but I guess since Tommy's just going ahead and dropping the F-bomb, Okay, we're going to go ahead and do it that way. Now I get by going into this, he wanted to set the record straight on several things that he believes Tony is incorrect or ill-informed about. But obviously, all he did was raise awareness on his biggest critic. And, and that's the thing. Why are people... 100%. Jumping? He... But it, I would even call this guy a troll. But you get what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Like, this is what you're focusing on, dude? Attacking me when they haven't had a chance to see and play the system. I don't think How people are, are doing that. I think people are, are hearing what you're you saying. Don't think people are jumping on me? Really? How many times do I keep telling people, look, criticisms are completely fair, right? Because you don't have all the information. All I keep telling people, and people have heard me say this a million times, look, don't make a decision until you play it. That's all. Could you imagine, like, us, me, not talking about the PS5 and Series X and S until we have it in our hands? Like, not talking about what we hear about specs, not talking about what we hear about upcoming exclusives. And then having, like, again, Mark Cerny, hate to keep using him as an example, but he's a perfect one. Like, him, before because people are being critical of the PS5, going on, like, 500 subs, 1,000 sub channels and fighting with them. Isn't that fair, Tony? Would that be fair? Make your decision once you have a chance to play it. Is that a fair thing to ask? No. The interview is... No, he's right. ...essentially turns into an argument at times, with both parties trying to one-up each other. It's quite tough to listen to, in all honesty, but still, it's a breath of fresh air from the literally hundreds of interviews he's conducted where he shouted out the same bog-standard crap every single time. Notice the only one there, like Snestastic, I think every time he talked to Tommy was beating off. And he didn't he change his name to the Amico kid? I'm like, dude, you you look like not saying I look young, especially when my beard's not dyed. But I'm like, bro, the Amico kid, you're like 60. <laughs> like the Amico kid? Really? You're the you're the Amico man. I'm Hey, mate, you know, you, you know, I'm, I'm going to take a piss out of you right now. Uh, we'll get to that. Honestly, there really isn't much new here, but it is quite eye-opening to listen to this play out. Tony TGD is Tommy's and the Amico's harshest critic, but he's also a walking encyclopedia when it comes to knowing what this system is about. In fact, he was one of the few people I spoke to who confirmed a lot of what I researched for this video and gave plenty more that I had no idea about. Obviously, fact-checked by me. You can check the full thing yourself down below along with a link to Tony TGD's channel and Ninja Kitty. Ooh. Ooh. We may, may take a segue here. I may go get some more coffee. And we may have to, because that would be spicy. And knowing what I know, I'll wait till I can put the shirt back on. Can I already? Nope. Yeah. Yeah. No, this isn't not focusing. I want you to see this side of Tommy. This is not focusing. This is actually being laser focused. Because this shows you... The only reason why I'm somewhat hesitant is because I want to get to the point. We'll wait a little bit, then we'll go there. We'll wait a little bit, then we'll go there. Because I want to show you him being interviewed by the kid. Then we'll go into Tony's interview too, among many other links. Depending if you really want to go deeper still into this because for the people who may be like, what the fuck is this? You will see the full scope of Tommy's narcissism and watch the H-Bomber guy video. It's a masterpiece. You need to see it because it's incredible. 
I don't know how this guy is ever going to show his face in the video game industry again. I have no idea. Endless Amico pit of obscurities and the endless amounts of pleasing everybody, like for instance, did you know? A lot of our games, before the, some folks have the, our actual control. Yeah, what the fuck? A lot of our games suck dick, horse, ass, in the, in the ass, bird, yes, up the ass, uh, are actually playing them with Xboxes on their emulators. Oh, that's... Why the fuck do we need your console then, Tommy? Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, what did, what did the, the, the uh, prosecutor for the civil case with Alex Jones where he got financially ass-blasted? He's like, yeah, Alex Jones could work again. He could go work at a Sprint store. <laughs> could you magic Alex Jones running a Sprint store? <laughs> you gotta upsell him! Warranty! This is Christ! We're actually playing them with Xboxes. Oh yeah, Sprint is basically dead, isn't it? He said a Sprint store, I'm pretty sure, though. On their uh, emulators. You can play Xbox on uh, uh, Xbox controllers with our skiing game. You can do that, too. <sighs> so the Amico has the ability to use Xbox controllers. Okay. And uh, Space Armada, yep, that just got added to the Amico. Sure, why not? Also, whilst you've got that open, you can add Battleship, pinball and curling and a whack-a-mole game and oh i'm so excited to watch that tony interview because you get to see the full like this is excellent we're gonna go back to it don't worry but boy oh boy oh boy spiker a very intelligent brain and an amico exclusive version obviously of a german created game called Sturmwind. <sighs> oh look a generic shooter time for something positive on the 12th of April 2020, Intellivision show off the never released Easter Bunny game for the OG Intellivision. Obviously, never released as I doubt it would sell well. Still, I adore little unreleased video game facts like this. He then jumps onto yet another podcast, and in this one, the host, Mikhail Casanova, brings up the growing feud between the CU podcast and Intellivision, and the results are not good. I, I think I think you should just come out and say it because when you told me this right before we went on air, I was literally shocked. And I think I think people need to need to know about this and, and how kind of discuss. I would love to interview Tommy now. I swear to God, I'd pay him. He would never come on though, because he is. We were all right. Every single one of us. Thing it is. I actually had um, people from a certain podcast, you know, the certain CU podcast. I had. Uh, I, I, it, it, that's the PU podcast. <laughs> that's so funny. That's like, what was it? What are you, 11? He said it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had uh, Ian actually reached out to me yesterday after I uh, put out the uh, announcement that I was going to have Tommy on my show and it was actually pretty crazy because I'm like, wow, um, you've never acknowledged my existence. Uh, I didn't know you even know who I was. You know, it's God, so many of these people were so fucking starstruck, dude. I don't get this, it. You know, calling me a, a, you know, a shill and a, a sellout and all this. And I'm like, okay, well, first <laughs> off, first off, I don't even know who the fuck you are. Well, yeah, yeah, I know who you are, but who are you? You know, it's like, you know, it, it was just weird. And it's, you know. Well, it's. And, don't know if that's exactly how it went down. I don't even know who this guy, Mikel, is, but I could picture that. I mean, Ian made up DMs that I have with him that never actually happened. And I said, by all means, you're not putting out anything personal. Ian, if you have those DMs, lay them all out there, dude. I don't care if I send a picture of my dick to you. I did. But you get my point. Like, just do it. Dick. They don't exist. It's, it's sick is what it is. And, and, I mean, how pathetic that this Ian character reaches out, who's clearly unhinged at this point. The irony of 
I'm saying. I mean, you yeah. know, how, how many other YouTubers have to, you know, smack him down before uh, before he's like he has zero self awareness of how he comes off, you know, to other people. <laughs> mm -hmm. But 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 Tommy telling someone else they have zero self awareness to reach out to yeah, it is unhinged. Oh, 100 percent. So is Pat. Somebody he doesn't even know on on and PM you private message you on. His head does look like an egg. I agree. People say that about me too, though. Twitter to, to, to call you out because you're a podcast and you want to interview me. This is how insane these these two have become. Like zero self-awareness. Damn, that is not good. Granted, and spoiler alert, the CU podcast was right about this system. But to call someone out as a shield before an interview had even taken place? Not good. I reached out to Mikhail myself as I wanted to get proof of this, to which he replied, A lot of folks didn't like me having Tommy on my show that one off time, and I know when I announced he was coming on is when the, the show started. As far as Ian goes, honestly, I don't remember it or the interaction with him, mainly because of how long. Bullshit. I spend. Well, I'm looking now. I'm a proud gaming racist. What does that even mean? No, and I can't find the DMs with Ian. Not how could you not find the DMs? It's not like you talk to him that much. That's what... I don't trust this guy either, then. Because... If someone... Sent me some shit like that... Oh, fuck yeah, I keep it. Still got email... That, not that I'm, like, keeping tabs on it, but I just don't delete anything. I have emails from... When I... First time I asked to interview Phil from years ago, where he asked me if I was going to have, like, the National Guard in his house to protect him and 37 VPNs when he was still on unsupported Windows 8. <laughs> Just because I keep him. Why did you... Why If you had damning evidence, Mikkel, of someone just calling you a shill for simply wanting to interview somebody from a podcast with a moderate following, why would you delete that? Makes no sense. It definitely knocks your credibility down. I don't know. What's up, Jay? No, if I delete it or not. Unfortunately, I think I may have deleted it as I don't have anything for the conversation saved. My apologies, man. Okay, he doesn't have proof. Those DMs, for whatever reason, no longer exist. So it's weird. So take this with a huge grain of salt. However, what I can confirm, because it happened. I know. DJC is still hoping against hope. And to me too, is that Mikhail was hounded as soon as he mentioned Tommy's name from the detractors. Again, it's just further proof of the divide between these two groups. Again, for a system that isn't even out yet. It's not a great look for either side. And I say either side because it was happening over on the other side too. You try and say something negative about the Amico on the Atari Age forums. And you will soon be bombarded with the pro Amico crowd jumping right down your throat. And of course... Oh, it was ridiculous, man. Leading the way in both camps, if you ask me, is Superstitious Tommy. Uh, there's a question by Miller B. Yep. I'm not sure. that, that's actually not Miller B. That's actually Tony, uh, TGD. So he, he, he's just uh, he's just trying to get his his uh, negative question in. But yeah, let, let's answer it. If you have an interest in the Amico or Tommy for that matter, how can you not get suckered into either side? Here we have yet another promo video, very well shot, I must say, in the Spider-Man zone, where he bigs up his history and his team. We have over 600 years of experience just on our core team. I'm talking about like the former president of Nintendo. Hmm. I mean, he's not wrong. Scott was a former president of Nintendo. Software Technology Corporation, which is still a super impressive mm -hmm. person to have on the roster. Well, you combine the cumulative time of how many years people have been in, that's where you get 600 years from, but... 
it sounds like ooh. But he is obviously being vague here and giving off the impression that he has on the team or someone similar. He also upsets plenty of people yeah. by using the word disruptor when like, describing the Amico's eventual impact. And we are going to completely disrupt like that guy the video from Xbox market. that was there it's for like five disrupt, fucking right? minutes and said, uh, nah, this ain't a good fit, mean. man, I'm out. Uh, for something to truly disrupt, it also has to replace what it's disrupting. Yes, Uber and Lyft did. True. All right. I got to go piss real quick. Going to grab more coffee. I'm going to keep going, man. Fuck it. What the hell? Why would I? Do I not like money? Why would I stop? Yeah, he looks He looks like a narcissist, Pumpkin Jack.
it'll switch back. Disruption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Ian. What you don't realize is that Tommy has a great reason for using the word disruptor. The word disruptor gives investors big chubbies. And we hear in more greater detail about the patent pending Karma game engine. We have something that's called our Karma yeah. gaming engine. Wait for this one. And what that means is that everybody, no matter what your skill level, can feel like you have a chance. I'm actually quite disappointed. My brother got a burrito. Wait, hold on a second. He has burrito cam footage, by the way, allegedly. That's it? No, you need better burrito footage than that. That burrito footage is not... You need to walk down the driveway. ...chance and that you're in the game. This is chucked about so much during the promotion of the system itself, but it's not new. The most obvious example of this is, again, Mario. But he... Sobs, you actually missed this. He admitted in an interview, shockingly another interview, that's all Tommy did was interviews, that it was a crock of shit. We just, I just made that up. It's bullshit. It's just rubber banding. That's all it is. Oh, cart. The people at the back get the best weapons and the people at the front get the weakest. Although here it's called rubber banding, it's nothing new, yet they talk about it like it is and that they are the people that came up with it. Regardless, what's the point in this snazzy new trailer? Well, it's here to bring in more investors, uh, crowdfunders, backers, pre-orders call it what you want because the amico is back for yet another round of investing or pre-ordering on the website fig and if you have never heard of fig before according to the wikipedia it's a crowdfunding platform for video games that launched in 2015 and before you say i'm not allowed to research on wikipedia here's the company's front page which uses the word crowdfunding a total of 11 times oh sorry tommy but I... That's crowd... He used to brag early on. Not doing crowdfunding. Not going to be like Atari. Not doing crowdfunding. Not doing crowdfunding. Oh, fucking really. Gotta go and update the list once again. This... At what age? Well, if you want to go by me, I live with my parents and own the house. <laughs> it's too family house. Uh... Dude, life happens, man. I remember I'll give this super cliff notes because I don't want to pull a fill. Broke up with my ex ex in 2008. Got laid off from IBM 2009. I was back home. Till I mean, I started full time at YouTube in 2013, till 2014. Then I moved in with the mother of my now three kids. Got laid off, man. Shit happens, you know. So the circumstances fluctuate. Why are you saying yikes? I own the house, dude. <laughs> yeah, what's the big deal? I, I own the fucking house, and my parents, my dad, you know, is I didn't have to move. Crowdfunding. That's every single original claim made, either broken or changed. Are you starting to see why video game companies don't talk about what might be included until it's set in stone? Anyway, after yet another mini trailer that doesn't show any gameplay footage, Tommy confirms he's in talks with Taito to bring back Elevator Action, Rastan and Jungle King slash Hunt. Well, the story with that was, is I was looking at other places and my parents were like, why don't you just buy our place and then we'll sell it to you under market value and that's it and yeah it's a nice area it's a good place for my kids when, when my kids are here most of the time someone's here to watch them if i have to work or do something it works out well and guys before you think i'm being too harsh by adding every single game that's on his list in his wonka book or wouldn't that be something 
what you got to remember is that the reason I pre-ordered this system was because of Earthworm Jim. You see a trailer for Earthworm Jim coming up, that's later in the timeline, and that's all you ever saw of it. I'm sure ideas get thrown around, but that was it. Of course, at the time, I never knew the history this in depth. It's just something I was excited for. Well, it's funny too, because some of the people who talk shit about that, it's like, they're like, oh, you, you live, you live in your with your parents' basement, and or, or or they go, they go back and forth, or you swindle them out of a house. So, do I own a house or do I live in my parents' basement? Which one is it? You know, this guy is a horse's princess piece, and ride them to Walmart, buy a ceramic bird, and then stick that bird up. I would stick the bird up my ass, actually. I don't know if it's a homestead, dude. It's a two-family house. I have my own kitchen and my own entrance. You know what I mean? That's what it was designed to be. For being a huge fan of the originals, and more importantly, the original Earthworm Jim team. Plus, for me, if it fails, then obviously I can make a video on it. Um, but that's a very unique situation. Yeah, but dude, you know why Juan Garcia, people won't mind their business? Like, Pat and Ian and... Uh, basement pissing men is because it's something to weaponize call me a pedophile say I live in my parents basement <laughs> and then but rich owns the house oh well he's well then he swindled the money out of his parents then which one is it dude do I situation to be in the important thing to it take just... into account here is that the average person may only see a few of his interviews or posts on average and if that person witnesses his name dropping a long lost forgotten classic from their youth, then it's likely to win them over. After all, that $100... That's, that's elevator action for the NES, and I loved that game, even though it's not really great. One's a 30 FPS too, which I find. It is guaranteed to be completely refundable. Don't believe me? Check this out. Are you freaking kidding me? Okay, you now officially have the opportunity to make. But context, like MD, it's like it, 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 the people say it's a got, it's a gotcha. No, obviously context is key. If I wasn't making my own money, if I wasn't paying the bills, if I if I was just here being a bum, that'd be different. You know. Make the best system. And I always laughed at that from the quartering. Like how. Like, did I tie my parents down and hold them at gunpoint and force them to sell the house under value to me? Like, how did that work? How do you swindle two people with all of their cognitive ability who said, hey, it's easier. The reason they did it, I don't know why I'm going into all this. Whatever, this is another reason why I'm getting off weed. Um, is because the extra money they would have made on the market, they would have just had to use to buy a house somewhere else. So it would have just went away anyway. So why not give the house to your son under value and you don't have to move wow almost makes fucking sense yeah because they would have had to spend like a hundred thousand dollars at least to get like a condo or something and then they would have to pay to move so whatever money they would have made selling it at market value would have just, like, disappeared instantly. You know? I don't even know why I'm going into all this, but... Don't ever create. Don't blow. So, with that in mind, let's continue. One user stated that he would love to see the never release the last Starfighter. I think what it is, and the reason why I go in, I hate when people lie. Not trolls. That's what trolls do. You ignore them. Or you go through their timelines and expose the fucking weird porn they're looking at or the homophobic shit they're saying and then they block you which is always funny when a troll blocks you um but yeah when you have big content creators putting shit out there like that it makes me a little angry it's lies a atari game that was shown off in the movie of the same name a long lost game that has become the story of legends amongst atari collectors and retro enthusiasts well, time to stop searching, everybody, because Tommy Tallarico is apparently having meetings about that exact thing. 
get it on the list. A couple of days later, Tommy gets back to those interviews with his biggest supporter in regards to subscribe account, Rich from Review Tech USA. If wow, I look forward again. People go to the Intellivision Amico.com, go to the store, and if you end up getting anything, I put together a 20% off code. The coupon code is IMA. That's I M A. I'm a shill. You do that, and all of the, and it's a 20% off, but all of the profits, we're going to donate to charity, and I'll tell you what else I'll do. On paper, you're welcome, dude. Got a video. What system would you like me to get from Lukey Games? Oh, I farted again. You're probably hearing it, too, because of the shotgun mic. I'll say, why well, am I, I'm waiting here to see what people, anyway. I have no idea, by the way, I'm going to be fully, I have no idea if people use that code. They may, maybe a whole bunch did, maybe a whole bunch didn't, and I have no idea if he donated to a charity. I have none. He's never talked to me about it. Knowing Tommy, he probably didn't, but I have no, I, no proof of that. Maybe he did. Do I think the Aya Neo 2 is worth 1400 Ugh. No, I would get the Geek with the 8... As long as you're getting... As long as you're getting the 6800U... Slopes will keep it to tomorrow because then I would have to set up like... I would have to get... Actually, no, that's not true. Yeah, I could get you on. I could get you on. I don't know why I thought that would have been so complicated. Here, let me. I just got to move the zoom to the, over to the other page so six billion people don't see the link. <laughs> You'll still come on tomorrow, though, right? Because I made the announcement. That's it. so. As long as that. Um. So let me get the link. Copy invite link. Go on Twitter. <sighs> Sex, I see a muscular black man sending me uh, tweets. <laughs> Jeremy Rubenstein keeping sexy Coco alive. All right, let me wait until he comes on because I'll have to make sure I'm sharing the screen with slopes. Zoom is such a buggy fuck sometimes. Return to meeting. Hopefully it doesn't do what it did with Jay where I even shared the sound. We'll, uh, so slopes, I don't know if you're here. I sent the link. Let me make sure. actually let me share it. Yes, I sent the link. I'm gonna close it down just in case for some unknown reason it pops up on the other stream and then 600. <laughs> like the cornering what I sent him, I DM'd him a Zoom link like a child. He put the public Zoom link on Twitter. Oh, that you got me, Jeremy. Remember he did that? That's what it reminded me of. Like a whole bunch of, like, who the fuck are all these people? Like, go on his Twitter and he posted the fucking link there. <laughs> Alright, take your time, man. I'll keep going for now. I'll hold up for when the kid interview it, though. I'm going to personally match whatever that profit is i'm gonna match it myself personally so we'll we'll end up doubling that oh shit. and uh okay. it's fair to say that tommy is feeling a little cocky here i have no idea if he did that or didn't do that he could have very well not have he could have very well have i don't know tommy's track record i would probably say that he did Tommy, your track record proves you're a fucking liar, so. Here by this point, 
Um, and, and they're all hardcore elitists. Not hardcore gamers, hardcore gamers like our system too, but these elitists, the racists. This is when he had a meltdown because, like, Griffin Gaming was roasting the fuck out of him with Super Chats and he, like, buckled under the fucking pressure. It was great. They're literally gaming racists. Shut up, Little Horn. Co Shut up, Little Horn. <laughs> Notice you can tell. Look at the look of dread on my face, first off. It, that is the look of pain. He's like, when Tim Heidecker had that, that fake cooking show that was just a joke uh, uh, on, what was it called, Jash? And where it was like the second episode, and he's like, to Mark617175, who uh, trolled me in there, fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> That's what Tommy's like. And Slopes is here, I think, anyway. Hello? DJ Slope? Are you connected now? It says you're not connected audio. I should be fine now. Now you are fine. It, it, it's a roll uh, the dice with Zoom, but it's, Zoom is still better than friggin' uh, Discord with this. Yes, mate. Yes. Uh, I just need to double then. Let me just turn you down. Ah, well, cheers for having me on and all that jazz. Ch thanks for watching through the video. Well, dude, it's great because, like, now I could ask you questions of things that maybe that I missed or... Because I know a lot of this lore, mm -hmm. but how long did this fucking video take? That's <laughs> take you to work on, man. Um, okay, so, I mean, properly working on it since October. But um, I... Uh, and and I, I was rendering it the day I released it. So it was, like, literally to to the minute um Holy shit yeah um but i mean I, I i kept trying to start it before then um the, the problem was oh cool you're showing the screen wicked um, yeah so you could hear it you could hear and everything too so it's not yeah, just like yeah. you're lost in the shuffle yeah so um yeah i kept trying to start it beforehand but the the problem was uh see i, I always like to do the complete history you know like the full story uh, the problem with doing that is you become the last person to tell the story. Um, mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, when do I do it? When do I do it? And I was like tossing up the idea. Yes, I should. No, I shouldn't. And um, um, and then I finally thought, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And then test units started going out. And I'm like, for fuck's sake, it's never going to end. This is never going to end. So I'm like, I can't do it now. I can't do it now. And then I finally started. And then the H Bomber guy video came out. And I was very thankful that um, he actually only talked about the Amico for like 10 minutes. So I was like, wicked, wicked. He, yeah, this. he just went into how much time. Like, this is perfect because you go into the Miko in and of itself, which mm -hmm. <laughs> you probably could have made a seven-hour video. <laughs> there's stuff, there's It's just amazing how much shit there is that's there. But oh, he, went, he went into just... It, he, he almost did you a favor because that was the perfect primer. Now everyone yeah, yeah, knows yeah. that Tommy is a perpetual liar or a pathological liar. Oh, for sure, man. So it, it kind of gave you a... a, a a beach volleyball metaphorically like we know that tommy's a liar now let's see what he did with the amico yeah 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 I, well, yeah when i when i watched it and realized, like i said it was only like 10 minutes or so i'm like right there's a lot more to go through so um yeah like i, I i'd spoken to a few of what definitely tommy would class as the quote-unquote haters uh, about this um and um basically i would constantly say to them okay look i've got this can you help me find when this happened or what, whatever else? Because uh, I, I had to double check everything because um, I knew that I know he's watching. He's watched it and I want to make sure it's factual. You know what I mean? I've got proof. Oh, yeah. Everything. He, he would want to come after you with a vengeance, man. Like you mm. like I, you've you know that he went into my DMs and before he blocked me, said that I need psychological help. I'm sure you've heard that. Yeah, before. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. I, I I just I just went through this actually because I just I literally just had a stream and it ended up it ended with me watching you watching me so I was like this is weird I'm gonna just get a hold of you because this is quite a weird stream um, uh, it was just, it's painful like as much as I'm very happy of the the success of the video and how it turned out and blah 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 oh this will probably get half a million views if you give it like a year to be honest with you. oh mate I, I I hope so but like the 
from a personal point of view, it's actually a really painful video to make. I'm not going to go as far as to say that Tommy Tallerico was a hero of mine as a kid, um, but he was definitely someone I heavily looked up to. I knew the name Tommy Tallerico before I knew the name Shigeru Miyamoto. Like, Really? Oh, shit. Well, but, but my, I went to a school with 70 kids. Uh, there was 11 children in my year. The year above me had two children. We would share classes with years below and above me. Uh, it was like there was no one at this school, and not one person had a Nintendo. Everyone had a, a Sega system, like a Mega Drive or a Master System, or a, a, or a you know a home co a home computer or a, a PC. It's no so one... weird how in the UK that was different. You know, there was uh, Steve, I don't know if you know Steve Benway from YouTube. He's been around mm -hmm, forever. Mm -hmm. He has a smaller channel. Yeah, he was saying like the NES that you guys call it over there was like not really a big thing. No, it was I, I know now looking back, I think I can remember seeing them, but I ne I. I reckon I played Mario, like, but I, that was it. Dude, in the yeah. States, they were, like, people had them, like, three of them in their houses. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> the NES that, is ridiculous here. But this, this is why I wanted to become a YouTuber. I went, I, I went into, like, this retro game store just before I became a YouTuber, and it was one of the final drives. And I remember hearing all these, not even kids, like, early 20-year-olds. And um, they were like, oh, man, yeah, the, the video game crash of 1983 and how Bomberman was a big deal and all this. And I'm just like, none of that was true. Like, for us. Not over I, there. Yeah, the, the crash was this, a states only thing, really. Yeah, but because when you guys were buying 50 quid Atari games or however much they were, we were buying one pound 99 tapes. And then we were so tight, we would borrow other people's tapes and make copies like. <laughs> that was how tight yeah. we were. No way. If, if I bought a game for one pound ninety nine and it was crap, I'm kind of okay with that. You know, even back then. Yeah, it's it's nothing. It's not you know. Whereas an NES game, even back in the day, was forty, fifty bucks in the states, mm. and that was in that was in Reagan money. So think about it. You yeah. know, if you if you account for inflation, you were dropping a lot of coin on a game that you had no idea if it sucked ass or not. Yeah. Before the internet, obviously. So, yeah, yeah. You had a box art and a prayer, and maybe one <laughs> TV show that you would occasionally catch that might give you an honest opinion. I remember it was the biggest deal when my mum bought me uh, Turtles, the uh, the not the arcade one, the, uh, the 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 old school NES one, but the home computer version for the Amstrad, because it was a seven pound ninety nine game. That that felt like a hundred pounds back then. But that was like I the wish. top of the end. That was like the top of the range games for like the um, for the Amstrads and the home computers. Seven ninety nine, because um, uh, every game was either ninety nine p, one ninety nine, or I would just essentially pirate them <laughs> off other people and make mixtapes of of tapes uh, oh, of games. Yeah. That even happened with like IBM PCs. Like my dad's friend would come with a floppy disk full of games, and he would just copy them, and you know, mm -hmm. so that. But yeah, like a lot of people don't realize that the game crash was really only a United States thing. Now, would have it yeah, yeah, if yeah. the game crash was permanent? I know we're going off on a totally different subject here, guys. Now, if the game yeah, yeah, crash sorry, in the sorry. States sorry. was permanent, no, it's okay. Who cares? They, they love it. They, I think they <laughs> like talking about the shit. Um, it probably would have had a ripple effect around the world, but the crash was really just like things were fine in other parts of the world with gaming. Mm. You know. Yeah, yeah, sure, definitely. I mean, we were how we had like porn games and bargain bins for the twenty six hundred here. Yeah, yeah, Tommy liked bringing that up Literally. didn't he, with the fourteen year old boy as well, didn't you? The porn game thing. Yes, you, we're you, about, you, you came that, in at yeah. the, we came in at the perfect time. Yes, right, we're gonna. Okay. <laughs> this is where he's doing the. Now I was just saying to my audience, I have no idea if he actually gave money to charity. I have no yeah. idea what happened with that. None. He could have yeah. very well not have. He could have. We can't trust Tommy's word, obviously. See, I've, I've heard you say this before, and these were things that were added into the scripts and taken out. Um, I was going to add the line: "There was no proof that he ever did that." But it, it, in my mind, it was like, "Why do I need to add that?" Like because it's just making him look worse. When really, all I'm doing here is just poking. There's there's no proof of this. There's no. Let's just keep it to the facts. Um, so That's the like smartest that. thing to do, yeah. because especially with someone like him, like you know what happened with. The guy with Ars Technica, because they they screwed up and publicly uh, put yeah, out yeah. the specs. He was looking to destroy that guy mm -hmm. when he was just being a fucking journalist. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you treading carefully if something doesn't have facts behind it is smart. 
Yeah. I, I, no, sorry, as I was saying, I went off on a tangent. Um, as, a, as, a, as a youngster, um, like I, I knew the name Tommy Tallarico before I knew the name of like Shigeru Miyamoto because I just didn't play in Nintendo games, but I was in love with Global Gladiators and Earthworm Jim and, and, and uh, uh, Aladdin and stuff like that. And uh, reading in magazines, I would see interviews with him and stuff like that. So I knew, knew his, of his name before others. Um, and uh, it, 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 it's the same as when I did my kick scammer video on John Kay, the creator of Ren and Stimpy. Like my, my youth was brought up with Ren and Stimpy. I loved Ren and Stimpy. A lot Me of my too. humor was based Me on too. But I'd never spoken to, to John Kay and I'd done a video on him, like exposing him, talking about his pedophilic ways and like all of the horrible stuff that happened with his Kickstarter and stuff. And it was all linked in. And then he finally contacted me and I'm like, this is, this sucks. I've just told 10 year old me that this is how I'm talking to John Kay. Like it was such a weird mind fuck for me. Like he deserved what he got. But at the same time, I'm like, as a kid, he was a hero of mine. And yeah, because of me, I'm Red exposing him. Yeah, it's, it's a tough thing to do, like, when you're a fan of someone or something, but you know you have a job to do, and you have to do it, and you can't yeah. be biased, you gotta be real, and yeah, John, I grew up with Red and Snippy, too, that some of the funniest shit came from Red and Snippy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. John I've just started, I've literally just started showing it to my son, because he wanted to know who it was, the, these characters in the game he was playing, I went, I'll show you Red and Snippy, because I've got, like, the first seasons on DVD, and I, I was showing him the one with the, um, uh, the nerve endings in his teeth and he's pulling them out with um, ah, with toothpicks yes. and my son was like oh my god and I'm like it's it's still got that effect it's still got that effect um, it, you've, you've, you've got to, you've got to separate the art from the from the artist in, in some instances uh, it's the only way you a can lot of ahead. people can't a lot of people mm. can't should but I tell you Tommy, one really sorry go on no go ahead no go, go ahead go ahead I'll say Jordan, no one really messed up thing about that that John Kay thing so I don't know if you watched my video on that, but basically the idea was I spend $30. It was the first Kickstarter I ever backed. You spend $30 and he'll send you a random bit of art from his scrapbook on lined paper. It was just like literally some scribbles. And I, you don't know what you're going to get. I actually got Ren and Stimpy. So I got an original picture of Ren and Stimpy from John Kay, all signed. And there's this picture of this girl that they're like in, in like sort of Flintstone underwear, you know. And I'm like, this, you know, it, it, was very, it was done as stereotypical, you know, big breasts, like massive eyes, uh, girl. And I'm like, wow, that's incredible. So I had that framed on my wall and I did the video and I talk about how, um, you know, he's a pedophile. And, uh, when I say pedophile, like, uh, I think it was around like 14, 13 year old, that era, roughly. It's so been a while since I've made it. It, it. It's messed up. Someone messaged me afterwards and goes, the picture he sent you um, is the... Um, is his drawing of his girlfriend and i'm like fuck no like he had how could you keep that up it's so weird i know and yeah. i'm like looking i'm like i've got i've got ren and stimpy artwork from the creator and a picture of the girl that he like potentially i don't know if that's true but if, like, allegedly oh, we'll say yeah it was painful like oh yes anyway <laughs> yeah and yeah. and now i know that tommy talarico is gonna see this and i just it, it's a very very weird weird place mindset to be in Oh, you know he's watching all of this shit. Yeah. He may be hidden online and trying to go do... Vid I wonder how... We'll get back into the video, guys. I know we're going off on a... I wonder how Video Games Live is going to play out now. He's already just trying to go back mm. to that and pretending none of this happened. Yeah, he's, he's not doing it on his main social channels, was he? But like, obviously, even though he didn't do it on his main social, it was found instantly and just like blasted. Of course. Of yeah. course. I mean, I can't follow him because he's blocked me and I don't give a shit enough uh to like go to a secondary account to look what he's up to but mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah you're blocked okay I, i'm i'm actually not um i looked to see if anything had changed and uh he's still oh he's don't still worry he, he will exactly. eventually I i'm promise sure you. i'm sure it, 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 yeah yeah <laughs> just just like dk oldies has blocked me just like I yeah I, I, i'm list. loving your dk oldies videos that that, that is yeah. that is prime time that is we're going to show a comparison. i got to figure out which console. I asked my audience. We're going to get something from Lukey Games and see how... Uh... Yeah, I'm surprised that Slopes is not blocked by Tommy yet. He must... I'm sure that'll change probably within the next, like, <laughs> at best, five days. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, let's finish. Because I want to get to the part with you where the kid... Because that was amazing to me. We watched that before. Yeah, I'll explain how I had to really be careful with wording that. Because I'm not insinuating he's being... Uh... Like in, in, in any kind of sexual way or anything, I'm definitely not in. I'm, I'm saying no. This is this is the length he's going to. But I had to make you, you know you know how the internet can take 
things that you yeah, say and like just I go just far with it. it. Yeah. Yeah, I just said people call me a pedophile like on a daily basis. So welcome to <laughs> with, with nothing. They're literally because I I've watched a YouTuber. That's what they went on, and people call me that. So yeah, of course. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. but I get what yeah. he was like. Why are you talking to a fourteen? Like he was like trying to be pals with him, and it's yeah. like, it's like, dude, why are you talking to? A, you can tell he has no kids of his own. Why are you talking to a fourteen-year-old about like sexualized things? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, Ex absolutely, absolutely. And uh, actually, that Lucas, I guess, the the channel, he actually uh, commented on the video, going, "Wow, I'm part of Amico history. Thanks," or something to that effect. Because <laughs> it just shows how ridiculous. We'll get into it, but it just shows how ridiculous he is. Like, what are you? What's doing? ridiculous is he's nineteen now. Well, he, is he really? uh, that, that's that's that'll be my. I mean, it was five years ago, so. Oh, that was in 2018. So yeah, he's 19. Um, it, yeah, it, we worked it out in, in the Discord that he's he's 18 or 19. Yeah, he's an adult now. He can have that conversation now. <laughs> God, I can't believe how long this shit has went on, and there's no console. That's the best part. There's no yeah. console. Mm. All right, so let's start this, and so then we yeah, can carry get on, to the, man. Yeah. yeah. COVID. So let's take more money. That has oh, nothing fuck, to do loud. with it. That was an ignorant comment. You know, give me a break. Um, oh, oh, I'm triggered. I'm triggered. Some of you, some you absolutely are. <laughs> some of your folks, I, like I'm not triggered. Some of your folks are douchebags. It's like just instant, instant. Uh, going back on what you just said. Instant. Yeah, like we were saying before. Like, could you picture Mark Cerny or or Phil Spencer from Sony or Microsoft doing this? Could you like that's the thing. It's unbelievable. He's incredible. Let's keep going. Some of your folks are douchebags. Uh, so D DM. Thank you for calling some of my audience douchebags, Tommy. I appreciate that. Thinking back now. Thank you, Tommy. In your chat, DM says, Pat and Ian are weird, but they are right about the Amico. Well, tell me what they're right about. They are. <laughs> they were right about everything. I hate them, Tommy. I can't stand them. Which I don't, he, say, you know he, the, he says now, I'll wait, I'll wait. And there you go. Here's your answer. <laughs> yeah, here's your answer. You know the like the story why they really can't stand me, right? Do you understand? Did you did you know that part of it? Uh, you, you, uh, fill me in, in case I have it wrong. Back in the day of, remember when they first started talking about Diablo Immortal? Mm -hmm. My editor. I yes, I totally know. Yeah, critical. I do know. I don't know if you've seen the video. It's as softball as softball comes. I was just like, look, I think your take is bad. My editor did that edgy intro, which was like PG at best. Ever since then, hated me. Mm -hmm. Stop following me. Call me a snake. That, and so when like the whole thing with Tommy Tellerico happened and I was completely out of my mind and tone deaf and wore it in television hoodie while I interviewed him, they jumps like that on that like flies on shit because i was like yes we can finally get him now yeah. that's where that really all started from with them for for those interested i have um i so i i originally asked pat to be a part of this video to be a voice in the because i just wanted everyone from every side the way mm -hmm. i see it is why are we fighting each other when really the enemy is in television uh the, the new in television um, and over fucking <clears throat> and, and, and over video games too if you really come down to it but yeah it, it, it's bonkers um um, uh, obviously, he, he politely declined. He was actually very, very nice about it all, and we, we spoke and stuff like that. But um, there, there is one part of the video that I know he's not too happy about, um, Pat. Um, I've tried to talk to Ian about it. I've not actually had a chance to speak to him. I've never spoken to him. Um, I think you've gone past it um, when I talk about when... Yeah, I'm interested to know. What, what, what is it? The Mikel Casanova bit when... Um, Ian called out Mikel for being um, a shill before an interview had even taken place. Yeah, that what was weird with that, and I just mentioned that, that made me raise an eyebrow, um, whether Pat dislikes it or not. Like, boo-hoo, he's, he's accidentally put out misinformation. So have I. Like, it happens. Like, get over it, Pat. Yeah. But the thing I, I, mean, I, I apologize that the way that it was done, but it, my, my intention was to show the growing distance between the sides, because I do believe Mikel... I don't necessarily believe whether it was Ian that sent it to him. It might have been some, there, there's a thousand trolls in the world of Amico uh, and, and fake accounts. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I yeah. believe that Mikel got that information, whether it came from Ian directly or not is another matter. Um, but my, my, my intention was to show the growing feud between the, 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 the haters and the, and the cultists. 
Um, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm labeling them there. Obviously, there's only a few really hardcore haters and hardcore cultists, but um, you, you were getting pushed either side. That was that was my intention. Yeah, it's ve it's very polarizing. My only thing with, with Mikel is like, and it's not that you're keeping track. It's not that you're being weird. Like, I have emails from DSP Gaming from like three years ago, and it's not that I yeah. keep them as a keepsake. I just keep all of my shit because it just it's free storage. Who gives a shit? It's yeah. always strange to me, especially when someone comes forward to you with something that would be damning on them why would you get rid of it it's not taking up any space on your so i always scratch my head when people do that yeah 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 um, for sure you know so but you could very well be telling the truth and maybe he accidentally deleted it i don't know but it always i'm always like i raise an eyebrow and like oh yeah i deleted the conversation that could totally uh redeem me and make the other person look terrible why would you do that mm-hmm i mean uh, i mean you know he wants me to go on his podcast as well maybe that will happen one day and then um there's, there's plenty of different accounts that you can go and look at to see if that exists but i don't think it matters to the story for me like i say it was really just to show the growing feud and anyway and I, it does actually... no it still proves that you, your point was still made and was correct that yeah it was it's very divisive yeah you know? and 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 to and i know you're not the fan of them but i actually talked positively at the way that they treated the amico throughout this entire video and that was very one very small tiny section of it so of the entire video so I mean, hopefully you don't focus too hard on oh, that. Oh, I've agreed with Pat and Ian on plenty of it, too. Like, that's, mm -hmm. like, I always try my damnedest, even if I can't stand somebody. Like, you know what? I know they don't like me, but they have a valid point here. You mm -hmm. know, because that is the way you keep your integrity. Like, even if someone yeah. despise, like, I've despised many other people on this platform, but if they say something that makes sense, like, Quantum TV has even made sense recently. I don't know if you know who he is. I hope uh, you know. I don't. I don't. Well, good. Keep it that way. Um... <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you're a psychopath, but, you know, that actually kind of made sense. Some take he had in a movie recently or something. Right, but right. a lot of these guys can't do that, though. It's like, oh, I dislike you, so I have to, even if it's... Like, if they can hear a rumor about you, and they'll put it out there without doing any fact-checking just because they dislike you. So, yeah, 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 sure. Uh, I'll give you one little factoid, actually. Um, I talked about this earlier on on the podcast, but um, did you know... Uh, sound a bit like, did you know gaming there, but did you know that... Um, before Tommy ended up taking over um, uh, after the, the death of Keith Robinson, which is obviously well earlier on in this video, uh, the company Pico Interactive, you may know them, they make like the uh, new Mega Drive games and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. They reached out to Intellivision to try and become the, and I've asked if I can talk about this and they've said yes and they've shown me the email thread so I know this is fact. But um, they reached out to become, to, 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 to basically take over some or all of the IPs, or at least some of the IPs. They had a figure in mind that they were going to be offering in television for these IPs, um, uh, which was going to go up to 50K. Uh, but in television couldn't, um, said no, because the um, uh, because they were 500K in debt. Oh, shit. So even though technically what Tommy is is part of in television entertainment, which is a bit of a sub side shoot of the original in television, it is still worth it's still quite eye-opening to think that before Tommy even got involved, the company was five hundred pounds, the five hundred thousand dollars in the hole, um, and obviously a hell of a lot worse now. <laughs> and and the thing is that it's like, it's just in television by name. I mean, Tommy's totally shelled it out now and dragged it through the mud. Mm. But what I never understood about in television too, when Tommy was pushing this and talking about going on Ellen and all this, like. It was such a blip in the radar of gaming history. Mm -hmm. What did you expect it to become? Like, he yeah, was yeah, so yeah. delusional. I think the only way he kind of convinced me was that he wasn't even going to be targeting us, uh, as in retro gamers or gamers in general. Um, it was going to be going for, like, this sort of, like, um, uh, uh, sort of a religious... Uh, it, it was going to be showing up in religious shops and stuff like that. And, and then there's a whole world of people we don't even know about that might be, do I want to say tricked into buying something like this? You know what I mean? Like, oh, you're going to be able to get a console that's 100%. There's, there's no nudity or no graphic stuff on it whatsoever. Everything's family friendly and, and stuff like that. And maybe they can get an angle there. And I think that was something that Rerez talked about when he interviewed him um, as well. Or, or at least come to that assumption, even. Um, but. For me, that just makes it more obscure and more appealing. If that, if it ended up going down that route, I could see how you. But my thing is like, 
how many Ned Flanders are out there that are going to be? I know, <laughs> like, you know, and his thing was it's like, a look how many, yeah, who? How many billions of people are out there playing free to play games in their phones? Like, because Tommy, the phone is always there in their pocket, and they could go to an app store in three seconds and download something free. You can't mm. compare that to a console that you go in front of it. You go home, you're sitting in front of your television, you're buying a game or whatever the fuck you're doing. It's not the same market. The people yeah. who were, I know I'm going on a soapbox right now, but because it pisses me off. The people who were playing a free-to-play game with their phone are never going to go near your console because they're not even really a gamer. They just play something while they're waiting at the doctor's office because it was free on their phone. Yeah, 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 100%. 100%. And, and he tried to like lump that in, like, look at the potential customers we have. It's like, dude, come on. Really? Yeah, that's the reason why the, the Wii U sold well and didn't continue to, 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 to do well software sales is because people bought it because it was a cool little gimmick, realized that they could do all this stuff on their phone eventually. And why would you then go back to buying games when you've got this stuff on your phone? Well, I've, you I've mean, always you tried, mean, the, always you mean the Wii, right? You mean the Wii? Sorry, yeah, the Wii. Yeah. Sorry, okay, 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 okay. Um, yeah, it was, the, it was the most successful dust collector of all time. I still see Wiis in the States at people's houses who don't mm. game who still have a Wii on the side of their televisions, and it's just like the dust is like six mile high on it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. not that there wasn't good games for the Castlevania and the oh, Adventure Rebirth is fantastic. Wii. Yeah. But it's, it's actually an incredible console. You just gotta really dig through that crap. <laughs> and But there was so much shovelware on it, man. Yeah, and big that, time. And the point we're trying to make, guys, is that we've moved on from that era, and Tommy was still thinking that, like, there's something there when the rest mm -hmm. of the industry is like, nah, we're good. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's get back to him. Like, Sorry, yeah, it's, about... it's going to take forever, but yeah, go for it. <laughs> it's all good. Because they, they don't even know what it is, and they've never played it. So DM, I'm, I'll, I'll wait for your, I'll wait for your response. Wait. Type away, my friend. Face it, Rich. You know damn well, both me and you, if we had the opportunity to get a lap dance from The Little Mermaid. Oh, uh, here we go. <laughs> uh, let me ask you a question. This was the question I was going to ask you. Go you, pro you had to suffer through a probably 8 million <laughs> hours worth of inter interviews. How yeah. many people there, while Tommy was preaching, were stone-faced for like an hour and a half? It's Barely. nuts, man. It's so crazy. And, and the thing is, I come from sales and marketing <clears throat> before I became a YouTuber. So I know the tactics he's going on. So for people out there that don't know, like I, I, I used to work in the Tell sales department. And um, the, the sales manager, or the line manager, I suppose, he would have these Excel files um, and it would have all of these, all of his customers' names and stuff like that on there. And uh, what he would do is like, you know, Mr. Smith, it would have like all these columns. So he'd have all the names of all his customers down the left-hand side in an Excel spreadsheet. And then along the top, it would be like uh, uh, daughter, name, birth date, favorite food, uh, favorite TV show, all these weird things about the customer, like absurdly creepy, weird stuff. And he would talk to them and they would they would send him Christmas cards as if like they're his best friend because he sold to them that well and knows them that perfectly. And it's and I remember looking I'm like, this is disgusting. It's this psyops. Is, uh, yeah. And he and, he made a bunch of friends with people. I'm sorry, my apologies to cut you off. Yeah, no, it's cool. He made a bunch of friends with people to basically essentially mind fuck them into being free advertising for him. Mm. Yeah, and 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 and, and then I would listen to him and he would do that same spill over and over again. And when I was listening to I'm, I'm not even joking, at least 100 interviews for this video. Uh, obviously, I would have them on double speed. Um, but they would be like an hour or two hours, three hours, sometimes four hours long. And it would be the exact same spill. He would start at almost every single one doing that weird thing where he's at the camera going. Ooh. And he'd be doing that. Is your parents still alive? And all these different um, uh, uh, sales techniques he would go down. So, for instance, is your parents still alive? It doesn't matter what answer you give. The answer he would come back to once you've said, you know, yes or no, they are still alive or they're not. How about I can give you, I can rekindle that, 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 that vibe you used to have when you used to play games with your parents. All of a sudden, the person that's answering that question is getting goosebumps. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yes. I love you, Tommy Salarico. And it's sales. It's sales. This isn't something he's just come up with on the fly. This is something he'd done over and over and over again. And um, uh, yeah, I, so I listened through an absurd amount, an absurd amount of interviews. And it got to the point when I was just losing my mind. So I'd put them on like two speed 
And sometimes I would download them and try and put them on free speed, playing through VLC or something. And um, it got to the point where I would just go to like different rooms of the house whilst they were playing and just blitz the room to try and keep myself occupied whilst listening because it was so, it's, so it's just mind like numbing. The- just like and it's true about sales too like i did sales for a long time and you got the first thing people are sold on is you like because people if people aren't if they don't feel like they connect with you this is what Mm. tommy was doing they won't buy your shit i used to do furniture sales they could love the furniture if they think you're a dick they're not going to buy it Mm -hmm. so what tommy was doing was is he basically built a cult because he was pulling out people's emotional strings yeah like how if if you if you don't hear any interviews and he just says all of this same spiel that works perfectly for him to you and you don't hear it anywhere else you realize oh wow this is actually really cool this is a really nice guy um but when you start hearing it a thousand times snake oil salesman yeah it's um but i had to go through them all because every single one of those hundred odd interviews and i guarantee you there's loads that i didn't i wasn't able to see um he would give one exclusive here's an exclusive for you and it doesn't matter if it's real or that's not. That's how you good. got all of them? That's yeah. how you got Well, that not list. all of them, but that's how I got the vast majority. I can sh- I'll can. i send you a link to my research file. It's just all of these interviews where it's like, at this point he said this, this point he said this, this point he said this. So that eventually when I get around to doing the, the, the script, if I want to um, find all the bits where he says, I'm going to kick Atari's ass, which he said about 20 times, I could control F Atari. And there you go. I can nick all of those clips there, you know. And, put and the irony the is, is, and the irony is, is that even when he was on my interviews with him, he talks so much shit about Atari. And the irony is, Daniel, eventually one of these years I'm doing a video on it. I have an Atari VCS right here. Yeah, I've got and you one can here buy well, one yeah. at a Best Buy. Mm. Can I go buy a bet? Can I go to Amico and buy a Best Buy? Uh, can I go to Best <laughs> Buy and buy an Amico if I could talk today? Nope. Yeah. And what I heard too, and then we'll get back into the video, is that a lot of times the demo units they had like an orange pie in there, or like that it was like a raspberry pie. Yeah, that, that's my understanding as well. You know, I don't know if that's been proven or not, but you know, anyway, let's get back to them crying. It, we'd be all over. True or false? Good point. Anyway, you know, Jason Enos, uh, who. Yeah, did you you know that Pat and Ian were like, oh, Rich wants to get a lap dance from a sixteen-year-old. Because of, I didn't know fucking anything about the Little Mermaid. I don't even probably remember him asking the goddamn question because he's just drivel from his mouth. He's oh. trying to connect with you. You're, you're, you're a vulgar man sometimes, Rich, and this is his way of connecting with you. Yeah, and he also tried to connect the same way with a 14-year-old. Let's continue. Worked at uh, Konami <laughs> for 12 years. You think he knows some people over at Konami that could help us with getting the Castlevania? Th- Add that to the list, Slopes. Castlevania, yeah. any game you mention to him, it would be, it, it's coming out. It's yeah. co- yep, it's coming. And speaking of Castlevania, can you, can you maybe light a fire under Konami's rump? And Look at the way he answers this. Contra- yeah, here we go. You're going to say, here we go, drum roll. Games on your system. Well, we're, 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 <laughs> we're talking to him. That would, I, I that would be badass if you brought it, and, and you could make- You could see by how he, like, looked down like he was lying. Like, I'm not mm-hmm. a... Uh, you know, speech pathologist, or he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we're uh, yeah, sure. Can, can I, yeah, I could talk to. Him. I talked to him yesterday. No, you didn't. And and then he gives you, um, yeah, hey, you carry it on, and then he and then he yeah. carries on and said, yeah, what about a four player contra? Make that as, as, as if that's being happened. As if contra as if that's too. happening. Yeah. How about how about four player contra? How about that? Oh, that would be amazing. On um, those controllers that don't even have buttons and a disc. Mm-hmm. Let that sink in. Hmm. Is this the real Tommy that we are finally getting to see here? I've never given a shit what other, what other, what, what other people think about me. Okay. The irony Let's of continue. him saying that. Tommy confirms that 12,300 consoles have been pre-ordered so far. We discover that one of the main reasons the system is getting released on that specific day is That was one of the more harsh um, interviews, Top Loaded Gaming. He, was, um, he went in a bit more, not harsh as such, but he went in with a lot more hardcore questions. If, you ever, if anyone wants to go look up that one, that was uh, him and Tony TGD and, 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 and you when he called you in on that one time after Finnegan Fox were probably some of the hardcore ones. Oh, he to, yeah, so. he, yeah, because I, I was, when I saw that footage, uh, I, know. Another t- <laughs> I was like, you have to be fucking kidding me. You have placeholder font 
this game looks like something I could play on, like, what are the leapfrog consoles. Which, mm-hmm. okay, the child thing, I get it, but it looks like uncompleted crap. It's a 7 out of just, 10, definitely, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, no, dude, it's a 10 out of 10. Are you kidding? <laughs> and he, like, I'm like, where, where did you come from? And he's like, I'm calling in. I'm, call-. I'm like, all right, call in. And I was like, Tommy, how could you justify this? How could you? Well, it's better than showing nothing. No, the fuck it's not. Wow, he- yeah. Every he game said- we release is going to be on the level of a cuphead, as he told, uh, he said to um, uh, uh, Rerez. And that's what he showed. He showed Finnegan Fox, oh, but everything's going to be on the level of Cuphead. My That tank battle game running at 15 frames a second, is that on the level of Cuphead? Mm-hmm. I've actually got a, a uh, press kit of Fox and Forest here. <laughs> Did, that's on Steam, right? That's where that game came from, and they re it, I've got it on the Switch, but yeah. And, and yeah, and that, that's the best thing is exclusives, but all you had to do is add, like, a multiplayer mode or something stupid, and that mm-hmm. made it exclusive for the Amico. But, uh, yeah. Here we go, let's continue. It's to honor the birth date of his sadly deceased sister. We also discover that the sister must be online to play physical games. Also, this is a pretty important date as it's when the system is finally taking pre-orders in Germany. As we move into May, the recently appointed Kara Acker sadly leaves the company. Tommy proposes Shocker. a seventh packing game. And then we get another game to add to our list, Decathlon. I love that pine pot from Streets of Rage, by the way. That, that, that was a right pain to get, that was. But, uh, yeah, I, I, it was something I always wanted to get. I always wanted to get that. And then someone copied me. I'm like, ah, oh, it's fine, I suppose. But I, I, it's not as unique as it was. <laughs> Dude, there was this guy who had... This is what happens. I always go up on tangents. There was this guy who had a Castlevania cube where you could play the Castlevania game. And as you played... The original Castlevania for NES. And as you played it, the cube would move around to scroll through the level. But the guy oh, wow. wanted like five thousand bucks for it. I'm like, nah, I'm good. I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, Jesus. Yeah, that, that, that was custom made. That one. I, I um, it cost me about five hundred ish. That's. Actually- I think it's a. Yeah, it's, it, it, I got it custom made from from some company that imported it. Most of it was import charge. But that's yeah. That's actually. I actually think for the quality of that, that's actually a pretty mm. good deal. Like, There's a button you can turn it on party mode and it all does like little flashes and stuff. <laughs> oh shit! Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah at least it wasn't five thousand dollars. <laughs> I, I dropped the uh, remote in a um. In, well, I got it got some condensation on the remote and it wouldn't come off party mode for a really long time. <laughs> it was like constant party mode with the pine pot logo for a while. Why? Oh, because there was like the remote to condensation turn it on, and on off. the uh, yeah on the uh, oh, remote. Oh shit! But, yeah, yeah. It, it's fine. I like dried it out of the whole rice trick and it sorted it. But yeah. Uh, for everyone asking what Pine Pot is, go play the original Streets of Rage. There's either on a Sega Genesis or one of the 8 billion Genesis compilations that are out there. Yeah, yeah. Or, or just go to Google Images and type in Pine Pot Streets of Rage. You'll see it. It's one of the buildings in the background. Just play Streets of Rage. It's great. It's, it's a bloody good game. <laughs> Streets of Rage 2 is one of like my favorite, well, up in like the top 10, I would say, of my games of all time. Yeah, it's but, so good. And, and Streets of Rage 3 is good, but it's hard. It's funny, the US version is harder than the Japanese version, which I that always boggled me. Yeah, boggled yeah, absolutely. Anyway, it's, it's a good game, but it's hard as shit. Mm-hmm. Yep, a decathlon game is already in the works. Another GameStop game! jump on board offering a unique <laughs> variant, the Galaxy Purple Edition. After getting... F- I still have my pre-order in, by Fake negative reviews right. for the system on... Just to be a dick. Just, I'm like, you know what, I'm... <laughs> It's symbolic. It like, yeah, it sucks. I'm losing out a hundred bucks. I know that like Phil Adam has probably spent it on making another letter once every six months. Well, but... the latest, the latest news on the uh, Amico is the fact that um, uh, so someone's trying, someone sent an email trying to uh, buy the IPs, and he's and and Phil Adam, I don't know if he's telling the truth, but his response uh, was that they are actually talking to people already three big companies about licensing some of the games um now let's just play devil's advocate and say that he is telling the truth um my mind goes to somewhere like a limited run games or someone like that um potentially releasing like uh, i mean what ones would be close shark shark and stuff like that i suppose as a little compilation potentially and then the money that they would make from that it seems like they would try and fulfill some of those orders. Because, I mean, there, there's about 20 of these things that exist. Um, two of them are already out in the wild. DJC has one, and I can't remember the other guy's name. Mike Mullis has one. 
Um, and the, 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 you obviously see these things at, at events like at Boomers and all these other events that he went to. So people have played them, whether that, you know, what's inside the console, that's another question and that's another story. But there are some and they could technically replicate those things and hand them out to people like me and you that have pre-orders down. <clears throat> so, and, and by licensing them out, then potentially that's what they're trying to do. I mean, it's just a theory at the moment, but uh, hey. I would be delighted to get one in my hands. So would I. If, and review it. So would and I. Given, and I would give it. If I walked over to this fucking day, I'm going to say this. If I walked the gate, if I walked away, if I could talk today, and the thing was actually decent, I'd be like, you know, it wasn't that bad, guys. Like, I'm not. I, like, yeah. I have no reason to hate on this thing, even though Tommy thinks so, just to hate yeah. on it. I, I, uh, I've already got it in my mind how I would review this thing. I would, I would do my own personal thing, but I would also go to people that have no idea what an Amico is, like my aunt, yep. my, my nan. What do you think of this? Because that was his target market. His target market was everyone and non-gamers. So let's see what the non-gamers actually think of this thing. I'm and dead ass if I get my hands on it. I'm sorry to mean to cut you off. So like I no, no. Doing st like the Skype-ish thing. Um, I would literally probably like rent out a booth in like a public space and be like, yo, come try this. I'm not kidding. Yeah. Because I wanted no one to say I'm biased. And I'm like, mm. what do you think? And if people were like, it's good, I'm like, all right, hey. You know? Yeah. And if people were like, it's shit, you know, then it's shit. Yeah, it, it works for the review regardless. Yeah, you, you, you're 100% honest. Yeah. <laughs> RTU Amico meet, meetup. Yeah, they tried a few times. You know, it's funny. I used to go after Pat and Ian for like, oh, because Tommy was like, you're so close to me. Take a couple hour drive out. And it's like, I used to call them out for that, but I get it. It's like, dude, I don't have an hour to, I don't have, like, if you're 30 minutes away, man, it's tough for me to get to you with all the mm -hmm. shit I got going on, you know? Mm -hmm. But yeah. You stream I, a lot, so <laughs> it take you I out of your stream time. I stream a fuck ton. I do more streaming now than YouTube videos. I just do higher production value videos. Yeah, yeah, it's the way to go. There's news. Yeah. Because this video, dude, I'm telling you, like I would say, 300 to 500 thousand views in this year. Yeah. By take a year, you get so, it. Man. Oh, dude, come on! And it's good. I was, get I was just trying worse. to look for my phone. I think my wife's nicked it. I, I think it's near. I think it's near 100k. It, it, I'm telling you, because it's already at 100k, so my numbers are probably conservative, especially because there's going to be more drama about this. So you know what's going to happen. Mm. People are going to look for more shit on Amico, and they're going to find yeah. your video and H, H. Bobber guy's video, probably in the yeah. reverse order, but still. So we got to sure. get to the interview where the kid. Yeah, comes with the, the fourteen-year-old. GameStop's pre-order page. Tommy gets his minions on the case. Check Xbox the Series has money for this to thing. Convince consumers not to buy Amico. This is how unhinged these folks have They want three fifty for it now, faith. by the way. Do me Nuts. a favor. Leave a comment about what you all think of Amico. Thanks. This results in ludicrous fake reviews being left from both sides. Like, for instance, the game's being full of microtransactions, one out of five stars, and that the UI and menu are worry-free. Okay, I got a complaint to GameStop or any company that does this. Why do you let people leave reviews on products it's that are so not? It's so weird. We were, we were just looking at the fact that there's, there's things being talked about on Argos. Like, because you can, Argos is a UK shop, uh, but they're still taking pre-orders. There's one down the road from me. Um, and 100%. yeah, they're still taking pre-orders. Trust me, this is not me defending the Amico, but like anything, whether it be a new Xbox game, how do you leave a review for uh, a game that doesn't have reviews out for it yet? Maybe if yeah. I could see the reviews out for it. But, you know, you could have an opinion on it, but you can't leave a review for something like you played it when you on, on a website where you supposedly bought it already. It's mm -hmm. just weird. What, what I find quite funny is on Argos, you know, when uh, like on Amazon and stuff, it says like uh, frequently bought together stuff. <laughs> on Argos, what's frequently bought together is the Intellivision Amico console pre-order and GTA, the trilogy, the definitive edition on Switch. It's like, what? <laughs> Who's buying these things together? <laughs> No, no, dude, it's just, I, I just think it's algorithm fodder. I wonder if they're actually getting pre-orders for it. Have you looked into that? Uh, not from Argos, uh, but I mean, there's people that are answering the questions. I, I don't know. I, 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 my pre-order was through, um, uh, through uh, what was it, Fig? My pre-order was right through, I think, the what, like the, it was in 2020, I think. And I'm like, you know, everyone's like, are you going to refund your, I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to keep it. Fuck it. Hmm.
that was one of the embarrassing things of the video that I knew I would have to face from from day dot. It was um, I'm so I'm going to do a video, and I thought it'd only be an hour and a half by this point. So I get about three and a half hours into the video, and then I say, and then I put a pre-order down. <laughs> it's the ultimate yeah, egg saw- on the face. <laughs> Yeah, but at least you're being honest, man. You're not like, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm being totally different now because it's going to fail. Like, you're owning up to, like, everything that happened. So that gives the video yeah, yeah. more credibility, if anything. It, I, I just find it quite funny at that point. <laughs> you know that, so you know that system we've just been bashing for the last three hours? It was at this point I decided <laughs> yeah, I would put a pre-order it was a, That I would put a pre-order in because cause then you could have a train wreck in your home, though. I get it. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? oh man, I, I I would I would I would pay some serious money for an Amico. I I I would love to have an Amico. It was the reason I still bought the Ouya even after it came out because I just yeah. wanted to see how much of a train it was just as much of a train wreck as I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. I got one of those. Arkle was the most complete experience. Five out of five. GameStop would eventually remove the ability to leave reviews for the system, something that they have apparently never needed to do before. Anyway, don't let all that get you That's down because apparently Tommy is also working on a crocking game for the Amico. After a forum user suggested that he should try it out, which he did, here is his board in the Aztec zone. Eagle-eyed and nosed investigators found several patents for Intellivision that include such gems as parental controls, even though this would surely never be needed. And best of all, and... Yeah, that makes no sense. Good point. If yeah. you are you having a system that's all children's games, why do you even need to have parental controls? So you're telling me that there is M-rated games coming to it or teen-rated games. It, it, he makes no sense, dude. No, I'm yeah, not making this really, up. Really smell a vision. Oh, yeah, oh, smell a vision's coming. Smell a vision. No, apparently. that was a real thing. Apparently, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's in the um, patents. You can go and find that out. Yeah, that was me. That was my screenshot going through their patents, finding that section by doing Control F Smellervision or Smell or something like that, and then pasting that on the on the on the screen because that was something Tom, that they were they were playing around with the idea with. Tommy needs to fart in a jar, and I need to sniff it through my Amico. <laughs> there we go. Wish we lived in a world where the Amico did exist and the Smellervision patent was not rejected, but alas this was not to be. Hey, it's time for some great news for the company once again, as Jay Allard has joined the team. For those that don't know, Jay Allard co-founded the Xbox Project and was behind several major hardware releases for the company. Intellivision was so excited to have such an industry legend on board, and so they should have been. The only problem was, well, not all was what it seemed. But before that, first things first, we get yet another person joining the company in June. We get Tommy teasing again on Atari Age. How many people did he need? Like he just Well he he claimed he had over three hundred. For what? I I, I don't for, know. I remember you saying that number before and I heard that number even before this. Like f- what the fuck were they doing? Mm. <laughs> it's really bizarre. And you look through, I mean, the Salt Lake City office and then that other one, um, in, in where is it, in California. Um, it, the, the offices look incredible. I remember when I felt I truly made it on YouTube when Sega invited me to their offices and I went to their offices and I'm like, oh, it's, it, it kind of just looks like an office. Uh, but, but in television, have a more impressive office. <laughs> the way that, that was, that, that was Tommy's weird flex. Like yeah. everything, like, oh, we're opening up offices in Dubai and wherever the hell else you said. China and, and yeah, yeah. And it's like, dude, like, did Analog do any of this? Did uh, Evercade do it? Like, they just released, like, why are you so worried about the image of it? But that's Tommy. As you I think learn, it's a juice company now, the, uh, the Californian one. Like, the, the office space is, is dead. And I believe there's a, maybe a, a fruit or a juice company or something like that. A juicing company already took it <laughs> over? That's amazing. <laughs> I think it. I think it's a juice company or something like that. It, it's like when they use the uh, Atari Jaguar shells to... Uh, yeah. To, as, at dentist's office for dental tools. <laughs> about a collaboration with arcade one up dropping in 2021 what was that nothing ever dropped in 2021 but what was what w- arcade one up like what was that we're doing something with arcade one up end of conversation that- nothing ever discussed ever again ever yeah that's that's what he does that's what he does over and over and over and over. we got this we got that we got mlb we got 
you name a game, he's like somehow, some way, it's coming to the console, and nothing the, 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 ever happens. The perfect example is um, uh, uh, Kool Aid. I don't know if we've done that bit yet, but the, 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 the guy goes, "My dad used to play the Kool Aid game with me on the old Intellivision. How about we get the Kool Aid game come back?" And he's like, "We've had meetings about it. We've had more than one meeting about it." Let's Always play had advocate. a meeting. Yeah. Let's, let's say that he has had a couple of meetings to bring a Kool-Aid game to the Intellivision Amico. What an incredible waste of time. Like, that's what you're doing? <laughs> Instead of releasing the console, having meetings of whether you should release a Kool-Aid game? I mean, obviously that never happened, but like, <sighs> what? <laughs> it's just so confusing. He was too busy having meetings to get an exclusive version of Beat'em and Eat'em. <laughs> it's, oh, it's so bonkers. It's so weird. Like, he can't, like, he has to lie about everything. It's like he can't help himself. Like, any game you named, it would be coming to the Amico. Except like, for except for a, 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 a Baby Yoda game. It's the only one I've ever found. He said, no, EA yeah, have got that. Yeah, it's like, well, I guess he's like, yeah, I'm not fucking with Disney and Star Wars. Like, he's not. <laughs> the, well, no, he said he, he, a Tron was coming. He was talking to Disney. He's got, he's got good friends. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Very he's good got friends. That. Oh, here I was thinking that like Disney lawyers would be knocking at his door before the interview with someone with five subscribers was even up. Uh, the KFC console will come out before the Amiga. I actually that was a great troll by KFC because for a yeah. while I actually thought that was true. They even went into what GPU they were going to be using and the Intel process they were going to be using, and they were saying you could warm your chicken while you were playing games. They're really good marketers. I was and I was like I was like yeah but I don't get that thing and it never came out they trolled the fuck out of me uh, and fiber internet's gonna be amazing Beagle Boy Gaming mm -hmm. by the way and yet again he jumps on another podcast with an extremely small YouTuber after that YouTuber slightly criticized the console here we go so, here we go i was looking on gamestop's website trying to buy some games and i looked and there's this new product coming out from mattel called the intellivision amico i looked at it and it looks kind of like an ipod i'm very confused so i want to take you on and this kid is right about everything too <laughs> the intellivision amico ride if you will if you're thinking to yourself, God, he's a bit young, then you would be right. This is like the most face, like the most cringe part of my, this my, whole my, thing. my palm is literally on my forehead. Like My it's... palm was on mine. It's so, this means, like you said in the video multiple times, that Tommy literally sits there like on his phone looking up Amico and his name. Probably so like heard 10 times a day. that um, he had people at the company looking. I don't know how true that is. Um, so it was either that it. or he had himself do it. Regardless, it, it was the same outcome. But yeah. It, 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 it's just the worst look for a company ever. And mm. then he goes, like, what did this kid have? Like, a, a, a maybe 1,500 subs? Oh, Not even? Like nothing, nothing. And you're going on there and... Def <sighs> anyway, let's go here. Watch. But that didn't it's matter. So cool. As exactly seven days later, Tommy jumped on the 14-year-old channel to try and convince him that the Amico is awesome. Welcome to Lucas. Today on the show, we have a big special guest. His name is Tommy Tallarico. There's two ways to look at this. On one hand, this is amazing. Tommy has time for everyone, not just the big channels, but even the small channels too. Here we have a 14 year old YouTuber talking to a video game legend. And to Tommy's credit, he praises the young lad's research and says some really nice uplifting things. You know, my, my God, man, I'm very impressed. I tell you, I wish I knew as much about video games when I was your age. You're gonna be, I'm, I'm not just saying this, but I think you're gonna but the KFC it's console. To watch. Sorry. Confirmed trolling. No, it's okay. Um, it is very painful. It's embarrassing. I'm embarrassed for him. Or just something that <laughs> cried to make couldn't and just dropped it. I'm going to look into that, dude. That might be actually a good video. What the fuck happened to the KFC console? Because mm. they even went into specs. It did seem real. Tickled Bruno. Anyway, let, let's get back to Tommy being creepy, <laughs> but not in the way that is yeah, terrible. Yeah, yeah. He's just being an, he's just being a tone deaf idiot going to be a big person in the video game industry someday. You could look at this as a kind of cool uncle thing, you know? A lot of the conversation is Look how humble how that we kid's got face is. He, he gaming. Really it's like, quite humbling, uh, but it could uh, it's not also grooming, come across... But... but he's... 
it, but the kid, even like everyone else, is like, oh, God, shut up. You could see it in his face. He's like, dude, you're not letting me get a word in edgewise. It's a little bit like a creepy uncle thing too, right? Mm -hmm. Like when he's talking about how back in his day, the company didn't have to worry about video game censorship on the Atari and what have you. That is until... Now there were a couple of like off the charts, like weird porno, like, you know, like... What are you talking, what are you talking? It's so good for him that he had a brain fart here and forgot the name Custer's Revenge. It's so well, good no, that he, act, I, he got it. He got it confused with um, uh, General, <clears throat> whatever he says, the the, the the character from Clue, Cluedo. Um, it's better than bringing up beat him and eat him. Oh <laughs> this would have been God. a bad time for that, dude. I can't like why are like I get it. Like he didn't do anything malicious here, and I don't want to. But yeah, it's still, yeah. why are you talking? Like if he was like my age, fine. But why are you talking to a kid about this stuff? I get he's fourteen and whatever, but. That's not your place to talk about this shit. Yeah. I think you say the exact same thing. I'm just like repeating it right now. You're about to say <laughs> it now. Uh, what was it? Uh, 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 the Colonel Mustard? No, that's that's Clue. <laughs> For those that don't know, he's talking about Custer's Revenge. Um, the game where you play as General Custer, dodging arrows on the way to rap the Indian maiden on the other side of the screen to a 14-year-old little boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now look, I'm not stupid. The boy's 14 years old. He's obviously seen worse than pixelated boonies and whistle. Uh, heck, he even says he watches the Angry Video Game Nerd too, but that's not the point. It's not Tommy's place to talk about Yeah, exactly. Shit. Tommy is so obsessed with getting people to like his upcoming system and to crush any and all criticism that he went onto the YouTube channel of a 14-year-old boy with virtually no audience, took over an hour out of his day to do so when he really should have been focusing on getting this thing released, and at times obviously forgot that he was talking to someone this young. A child. Look, <laughs> yeah. Look, even though I'm sure the intentions were good here, and this is so sad and quite eye-opening, as was his next interview. <laughs> All right. We'll pause in here. Fun. What we're going to do is I'm going to take, take a break. Shout out your channel. Tomorrow night um, at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, my time. Unfortunately, unfortunately for you, it's going to be way later. But No, that's cool. It's cool. I mean, it, it's gonna, now, I'm, essentially, yeah. I'm going to have Slopes on Twitch with Jay, and we're going to be talking about all Amico, all Tommy, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Also, Slopes' channel is in the description. Check it out. He makes great videos. Oh, it is. Yeah, other cheers, documentaries man. like that. Thank you. And... This was just a little taste, so yeah, come on uh, tomorrow night to Twitch, and yeah, man. this is it's going to be even more interesting. So, thank you, Slopes, for coming on. Uh, yeah, no worries, man. Tomorrow night should be a lot of fun, and I look forward to talking to you then. Yeah, absolutely. Um, are, are you going to continue watching this? Because I want to quickly tell you something about this. Um, what I'm going to do is actually take a break. i got to make a couple phone calls. I'm going to watch yeah, okay. the Tony MLD interview where it gets heated. Right, and we're okay, gonna okay. Come back to this tomorrow. Yeah, that's so, cool. We'll, we'll chat about it tomorrow then. That's cool. Yeah, we'll watch. We'll watch it tomorrow and do that there tomorrow. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Cheers for streaming. It, it's, it's actually really exciting. Uh, I wake up in the morning. I'm, oh, wicked! This, uh, this uh, watch review tech USA watching my video. It's quite cool. Um, but yeah, it'll be cool. I'm looking forward to it tomorrow. It should be good. A absolutely. And again, guys, I have him linked in. I have this video linked in the description. It goes sub, sub to slopes. He's awesome. And thank hey. you, Daniel. Thank you very much, bud. And I'll chat to you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one. Later. Yeah, he's awesome, man. Uh, I want to take a, like, yeah, that is, I got to go and make a couple phone calls to a couple people. I'll be back and we will watch. We'll finish watching this tomorrow with Slopes. Again, link in the description um, for my Twitch channel. But we're going to go into the heated interview he had. I want to see. It'll be a nice little sidestep to this to see the insanity that is Tommy Tellerico. And again, Slopes, thanks for coming through. That was a lot of fun, and it'll be even more fun tomorrow. I'll see you in like a half an hour, guys. Maybe 45 minutes, but I will be back. See you soon.